I'm Rachel from Marie Antoinette Cake, Cake Design and the Sugar Craft School. Oh, come on. No, that's Simon, that isn't on. That's why, <laughs> that's why I was confused, you see. <laughs> um, as you guessed, Simon is here on camera. <laughs> kind of on camera, it's kind of wrecking the joke. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Um, and Carol is here in the, on, on comments as well, so she'll be chipping in and um, asking lots of your questions and reading out lots of stuff and obviously passing on whatever information you require throughout the live. Um, I'm here today to do another cake decorating demo, so I'll be doing a two-tier cake, I'll be working on dummies today. Um, it is sweltering in here, we're all, we're all sweltering, we've got a little fan, so there's a weird noise in the background, that's just the fan, um, which Carol and I are sharing. Um, so Simon's on his own, <laughs> no fan. Um, but we are going to be playing with the new um, brand from Massa, which is the Mona Lisa brand. So some of you will have seen this on the website already. So at the moment, there's a little bit of confusion around it, which I'm gonna try and explain, and hopefully if there's any questions, I'll be able to answer them. But more than that, I'm gonna get using it, and I'm gonna show you what it can be used for, show you, um, I'll be covering a, I've got a cake that I've already covered here in the pink, which I've mixed with some white. I'm going to be covering this one in a dark green and we're going to be doing lots of different techniques on them as well. So we're not just been, going to be covering, we're also going to be doing some decorative techniques with lots of little bits that Carol's brought me to play with. So, All in um, 10 minutes because we're up. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> whistle stop tour. Um, yeah, no, you, you know it'll be, I'm going to be going really fast. So, <laughs> But you'll be able to watch it back and we're on YouTube as well, I assume, aren't we, Simon? We are. Uh, we've got a few people there already. Excellent. So. But yeah, hello say hello YouTubers. and um, lovely to see you. But yeah, it is really warm in here. And for any of you that have had cake orders going out over the weekend and you've been battling with the heat, you will be sympathising with me tonight because I've just been needing some sugar paste and it's just not the weather for sugar pasting at all or caking at all. So, But we're going we're gonna to do it anyway because it's fun. So, um, so just to start with, I just want to quickly run through... For those of you that aren't aware, um, there is a brand that is called Massa Ticino, or Ticino, some people call it. I don't quite know which is the right way, but I, I say Massa Ticino. I say Ticino. Oh, yeah, it. no, Ticino, that's what I oh, say. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're not quite sure which way this brand is. But anyway, it was recently brought out by Calibo, who make the chocolate, so the chocolate brand. So, And they've made a few changes. So they have essentially brought out a second range within the brand. And they've branded it as Mona Lisa, but still under the Massachino name. So Massachino, but it has this yellow tab on it called Mona Lisa. And you'll see on here it's called Multipurpose. So when they were naming it, they basically wanted, this is like the same as lots of other sugar paste brands and lots of other brands all over, no matter what the product is. 
they have different price points and different um, ranges at different price points. And this is one of those examples. So the Mona Lisa is basically a multi-purpose sugar paste. They also have, under the Massuccino brand, um, the Tropic, which is like their premium product, um, which is really designed for sort of um, when you're doing real sort of high-end products or you've got bigger budgets because it is more expensive. So this new range is basically been designed to give people who perhaps have customers who don't have the budget that can afford the Tropic product, but they still want to use a really good product with um, really good properties and really good sort of all-round usability. And so that's what this brand is for. So much the same way that, um, for example, we were talking earlier about the Renshaw brand, they have like, I think, two or three different yeah. t types of sugar paste under their Renshaw brand. Um, this is just like a version of that. So it's their multi-purpose brand. Brand. Now they were going to call it every day but it's been called multi-purpose because actually when the development chef started working with it they realised that actually it had quite quite a broad ranging usability and I'm going to show you a couple of things that um, you can use it for not rather than just covering tonight. So we'll be doing a few de decorative te techniques all just with the Mona Lisa multi-purpose. So just so we get it right, we're only using Mona Lisa tonight. Absolutely, yeah. Because that's a new brand and, um, and that's yeah. what we want everybody to understand, yeah. isn't it? So it is at a lower price point. So if you have used the Tropic before, um, what I want to be really clear about is that there is a difference in, in, the, in the product which you may notice. So if you've used the Tropic before, um, Carol knows that I, I love using the Tropic and it's what mm. I use on my wedding cakes. Having said that, I've done demos here, the classes that we've done, the Sugar Paste Masterclass that we did, I used three or four different brands of Sugar Paste yeah. throughout the whole day and you know they were all, they were all perfectly fine and usable. Um, but if you have used the Tropic before, you may well open these packets, the Mona Lisa packets, and notice there is a slight difference. Um, and please don't worry about that. Um, it is, you know, you, it is a, it's a, a lower price point product. So you wouldn't necessarily expect it to be exactly the same with all, all the same properties. Um, so yeah, please just be aware of that. If you've never used the Tropic before and this is your first sort of um, experience or encounter with the Mona Lisa and the Massa brands, then um, what I just always advise people to do is order a couple of the packs. So these are the 250 gram packs. They're really small. You don't need to, like the, the Tropic comes in like a seven kilo tub. Whereas these are like usually sort of what four pound price ish yeah. price point? Um, I think the oh, the Massa, oh yeah. sorry, the Mona Lisa ones yeah, are so cheaper, cheap, aren't yeah. they? Um, so what I would just recommend is that you order a couple of packets, perhaps in a couple of different colours, have a play about. I have always said to my students that you will, um, even though I love a particular brand of something, somebody else might um, swear by another brand. So um, it's really important that you try the different brands out because. What, what I really enjoy using might be different to what you really enjoy using, but it's just about sort of educating yourself and, and having a go, And but you don't need to obviously spend a fortune. So next time you're putting an order in on Sugar and Crumbs, just add a couple of packs to it, give it a try, um, cover a dummy or cover a cake for friends and family or something like that and see how you get on. But I'm going to show you a few a few ways. Say, of using I think it it's today. like everything. I think you know what when you use a particular sugar paste, you get used to that. Oh, you definitely. understand it, you know it, and you stick with it, don't you? Yeah. And then suddenly you suddenly get given something else, and if you don't give it time, you just it's rubbish. Yeah. You're it's like, rubbish. oh, that's different. Yeah. So I don't like exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. But um, it is it is a it is a nice product. I will show obviously show you it tonight. And um, this is the pink that I covered yesterday. So I'll show you the pink as it came because this isn't the pink shade that it comes, this is quite pastely pink. Um, it's actually quite a strong bubblegum pink that, that it comes in the packet. So this is how it comes in the packet. Yeah. So I've then mixed this. This actually looks quite white on camera, but it's it's a nice like baby pink, oh, isn't it, in real life? Pink, yeah. Whereas that's like quite a, like a bubblegum pink. Yeah. So you don't need a lot. If you want like a, a baby pink, um, I think I've used about three packs of white to like, three quarters of a pack of pink here. It's about that ratio anyway, but you just mix it by iron when it gets to the, the shade you want. But um, So for example, you wouldn't, to cover like a six inch cake like this, I think that's six, maybe five, um, you would six. you would only need like one pack of the pink to do that and then mm. mix it in with the white that you, you, know, you would normally use. So um, you don't need a lot to get the pastel tones. We are going to be covering this one in a, in a darker green. 
Um, to colour it, you can colour it any way that you would normally colour sugar paste. So um, the gel colours are great, so I'm just going to use some of the Pro Gel Holly Green, Holly Green. <laughs> um, just checking the name there, um, to just deepen the green a little bit. Again, I'll show you the colour that it comes in no, to begin before with. Before you do that, can I just say a few hellos? Yeah. Right, so first of all, we've got a fantastic audience tonight. Thank you very much. I'm actually Amazing. surprised you're staying in to watch us. It's so hot, <laughs> but well done for all of you there. Good. Simon is on camera. I'm on comments. I said to... Um, Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> Preemptive. I can't, so I can't stand there, Rachel. I'm going to sit around here by this fan, which is why she started. So I just want to say a couple of happy birthdays to Lisa Matisha and Lee Carroll, whose birthday it is. We're not going to sing. We'll sing later on, just in case anybody else pops up. Mm. But a happy birthday, guys. Hope you, you've, I tell you, you've had a smashing day. I know. Have a great day. weekend. Yeah, exactly. And a great weekend as well. Um, so um, we've got the fly trapper going and the other noise as Rachel said before is the fan and we're sorry about that um, but not um, that sorry okay. <laughs> not no, that sorry no. <laughs> we're sorry about the noise it's survival taken. okay so if you sit back and enjoy okay remember we're not trying to change you here we're just trying to show you the new product sugar and crumb sells lots of sugar paste but we do, Massa does seem to always come out as everyone's favourite, albeit there is a price point with it. Yeah. And then the new Mona Lisa um, has come out and it's caused a little bit of confusion. It even causes confusion in our warehouse we're picking. And if you just show it under there, yeah. right when our lads are picking, you know, they'll go and pick and give customers Mona Lisa when they're uh, Massa Ticino when they're meant to Because it's only Mona this Lisa. yellow tab, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Really. So, you know, some of you have benefited by having massa in your order for the price of mona lisa <laughs> drives me nuts um but yeah just in case you're confused as to like what what to order or what you are ordering or what the difference is that's basically the point of this evening so that you can hopefully we can just clear that up for you and that you can you can sort of be clear as to what you need to order and and understand back. why it's a multi-purpose use yeah so sit back enjoy and um, I'm going to shut up now and let Rachel get on with it. So it comes in, um, obviously, the normal colours, but it, it, there's quite a colour range with it as well, as as there is with the normal Massa. Um, and some of the packs are in, so the more popular colours, I think they're doing in the one kilo packs as well as the 250. God, that scares me. Um, but you'll be able to see all that on the website. Um, but just look out for the yellow tab. Um, which is and obviously you should see a, if you're confused as to there might be two blues and one of them same pack, pack sizes and one of them is more expensive than the other it's because one's the, the original Massachino and one of them is the new Mona Lisa multi-purpose so just go, have you just go to the overhead Simon so this is the green as it comes so it's a really nice vibrant sort of what I would call a grass green so it's great for like kids cakes you know it's really vibrant for what I'm doing today, I've darkened it, so I'm just going to show you how I've done that just to um, tone it down a little bit, but quite easily. So I'm going to add a little bit of Pro Gel of the Holly Green, and I'm also then going to mix a little bit of the black Mona Lisa sugar paste into it. So sometimes I see people asking in the group about, um, they're struggling with colours. So it's a couple of things I just want to talk about colours on while I'm mixing this in, because going to be needing a little bit here. <laughs> so why have you put Trex all over the board then? Because um, just for workability because yeah. it's very dry in here. Yeah. So normally I would always to condition my sugar paste, yeah. um, always add some Trex in anyway, but I will always add more in when it's so dry like it is today yeah. um, because the, the air is so close that it, as you're working it, the air will dry this out and make it less workable. So by adding a little bit of Trex in, you're just making it a little bit more pliable and you're giving yourself a little bit more time um, to work with it before it starts to sort of firm up. Good tip that ladies, write it down, Top remember tip. it. Always use Trex. I saw someone the other day actually that, that had said they'd had a nightmare on a post and said they'd had a nightmare with sugar paste and it was elephant skin and cracking yeah. and all, all the ladies' comments were like, Trex, Trex, Trex. And I was like, I wonder how many of these ladies have done my uh, sugar base masterclass. Um, but yeah, so on colours, um, I do see a lot of people struggling with colour mixing, whether that's sugar paste or whether that's buttercream. 
and people struggling to really get those deep darker colours because you you need to add quite a surprising amount of um, food colouring to whatever it is you're colouring and people sort of get halfway and they've used all the colouring that they bought for a project and it's like it's just not not dark enough so what I would always suggest is if with sugar paste if you're doing pastel tones um, it's absolutely fine like you'll be able to achieve those pastel tones by adding pro gel or like it, gel colours to white sugar paste because you don't need to add that much that was just an air, bu an air bu bubble popping um, but if you're going for deeper colours so like the navy blue so I did the navy blue where I painted it um, I don't know when that was now a couple of months ago now on a live with sugar and crumbs and um, where we looked at the difference between how the blue sugar paste comes naturally and then how um, to get it to a, like a really nice deep navy blue um, and it's the same with this so you could keep kneading um, the gel colour into that and you could keep adding it and keep adding it and keep adding it but you'll tie yourself out and especially on a day like today it's far too warm for that nonsense so just by adding a little bit of black in so I've just popped a little bit so about that much so far um, just add a little bit of black in it will really sort of deepen that color much quicker um, than if you were adding the gel the other benefit of it is that um, you're not adding loads of gel color to it which will then ch massively change the consistency of the paste so if you're trying to get a really deep color you have to add so much coloring in that um, it can really change the consistency of your paste and change it from being workable to actually um, you experiencing problems when you're covering your cake. So just be mindful of that. If you're going for pastel tones, you can start off with a white and add in some gel colour and achieve that because it's much lighter. If you're going for darker tones, what I would do is buy the, the, the ready, the pre-coloured um, sugar paste and add in whatever, you know, it's, it's, you saw it still came quite vibrant. So to add to take it to a darker tone we're gonna we've added some pro gel just to deepen it a little bit and then we're gonna add in some black just to really speed that process up and I know it might sound a bit weird to add in the black but it's you've seen it still so I've changed it into like what's really is a bottle green rather than like a grass green so I'm just give, making sure that's nicely mixed in And I would always recommend, obviously we're not doing it today, <laughs> but I would always recommend that um, you colour your sugar paste before you need to actually cover the cake. Um, because even though I'm not adding loads of gel colour into this, I am adding lots of warmth into it with my hands. And it's making it stretchy and um, really soft. So which can, um, with some brands of sugar paste, it can make it almost impossible to work with. With this one, we will see how we get on. But um, with the coloured sugar paste, so um, for example, if I wanted to cover a cake in black, I'd be really confident with the Massachino one. I've not used the Mona Lisa black yet to fully cover a cake. Um, but the, the uh, original Massa one, which is slightly more expensive, is great. Um, whereas some of the other brands that I've tried with, um, like the the colours that have got lots of colour in, like the black and the dark blues and stuff like that, um, they can be a little tricky to work with. So, um, yeah, just like I say, if you know you've got a cake coming up that's um, going to be a challenging colour to, to work with, order a couple of small packs and give it a go and see how you get on beforehand. Make sure you're happy with it. Okay. So it's quite a firm paste. It's not. Um, it's not. I don't think it's quite as firm as the Tropic. Um, but it, the weather today is kind of crazy. So, um, but it is definitely firmer than some of the brands out there. So if you're used to using something like the Renshaw paste, you might um, you might need this and think, oh, it's quite a bit firmer. Um, but actually. I quite like that because um, it's from a usability point of view. It means that 
you can cover cakes and it's not going to re like tear really easily or stretch or become misshapen really easily. So we're going to do some ruffles on it um, on the cake in a little while and actually run it through the pasta roller which I wouldn't be able to do with some brands but I can actually do it with this brand. Touch wood, hopefully we will be able to do tonight. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, some brands I wouldn't get through the pasta roller um, really fine because they're, they're just too stretchy and it would just kind of pull and become misshapen um, so but we are going to do that with tonight so I'm going to cover this dummy so Antonia's asking what's the difference between fondant and sugar paste it's the same thing so in on American baking shows they tend to call it fondant and over here it tends to be called sugar paste fondant over here technically is like a pourable icing like what fondant fancies are covered in so that that technically in the UK is what fondant is it's like a drippy icing and um, that's then yeah, crust. Nice sugar buns yeah yeah um whereas i think we're all getting used to the word now yeah loads of people way. use it interchangeably because obviously there's a lot of um american baking shows that people have watched and things like that where they just refer to it outright as fondant so it's the same and it's the same with gum paste gum paste is flour and modeling paste so when you hear gum paste Basically, if you buy flour modeling paste, that's the same product. product. Just this. I you won't get gum paste here, we don't call it gum paste here. No. But you will see things like YouTube tutorials with it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Gum paste, yeah. definitely. Your hands are nice. Like, incredible Hulk And colour. I think they call it that. I don't know if this is right. I think they call it that because they've added gum tag to it. I think so, yeah. yeah. So, we don't need quite all of this, so I'm going to cut some of that off to save me a job. But you can see how little black I use there, and so you don't need to be ordering, like you only would need like one pack of black, and then you just wrap it up really tightly, make sure it's in like a, it's double wrapped so it's airtight, um, so that you don't need to um, buy another pack next time. Um, it will dry out if you don't wrap it properly. A little bit on top of there. Um, the question's just come up, Janie Scott. Somebody's actually answered it, but I'll read it anyhow. Yeah. Please, can you tell me if there's a difference between paste colours and gel colours? And Michelle has answered it perfectly. The difference is the consistency. With both colours, just add a little at a time to get the colour you want. I use both paste and gel colours, and I hope that helps. And that's perfect. That's exactly it. You'll find that paste colour colours are really quite thick. And they're in a little tub and you need a little cocktail stick and take a little bit at a time to yeah. add. And um, I like paste colours, but for that reason, it drives me mad because I end up with more colour on my fingers. Yeah. And I go through hundreds of cocktail sticks, so therefore I just prefer to add gel colours, which is looser. And you can just squeeze it out the tube. Yeah, exactly. Because you find with a paste colour, you start off, you, add, you just end up adding loads and loads. Before you know it, you've got a little scoop going in, haven't you? Yeah. And then another paste colour, you go and put a little scoop in, and you only need a tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I prefer to stick with gels. And they do last for ages, so yeah. you don't need a huge amount. That's a lovely green you've got there, Rachel. Getting very warm in here. I bet you are. I'm very glad I'm sat this side. You're right there, you two are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're very, we're very, we're okay, aren't we? Sorry? Chill. Are you getting any of this fan or am I hogging it? I'm feeling a bit better now. I'm just sat yeah. here. Well, to be fair, you were working hard before the live, weren't you? He was. He was up and down ladders yeah. setting up lights. Yeah, Simon's put all our new lights up tonight and we're very excited. I uh, don't know whether they work yet. They're not plugged in yet, are they? Yeah, they're on, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah, they're on. Oh, yeah, there's the, no camera up there. There's no, that's it, no camera, sorry. They're lighting up the bottom yes. end of the kitchen where nothing's happening. <laughs> yeah, Karen was on them today, though. We want to use um, the whole kitchen and um, I was saying to Simon that we could do with some more lights in here because when I look sometimes, it looks a bit grey, the background, so he's put me... Uh, how many more have you put up here? Three. Three, three this end and two no, down there. Three all together, the three extra. Oh, is there? What's going on here then? What's this <laughs> up here? I've just looked at those lights and that was all I can see. <laughs> 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 Blind, I'm just going to keep rolling. I'm just going to keep rolling. I'm just going to keep rolling. I'm just going to Yeah. Like, what's going on with this sugar paste? <laughs> it's spotty. Um, so, uh, 
Yeah, lots of people love this green colour. And Sylvie Anderson said there's no heat in the Shetlands. It's only 14 degrees today and foggy. Oh, my God. Oof. The thing is, you can never make us happy, can you? We've got this heat and we're all whinging about it. When it's raining next week, which it's raining all weekend, apparently. Oh, is it? Yeah, we're all going to be crying. I won't be crying. Yeah. <laughs> no cake decorator will be crying at a bit of rain after this. And Nikki King says, Simon, have you been working with three fingers today then? What? <laughs> he normally has two fingers when he's working. Oh, okay. But now that he's put cameras up, he may well have worked with three fingers. <laughs> he's actually worked with two hands today. Yeah. And he got his step I'm, ladders. Yeah, and he legs. <laughs> and yeah, yeah he, was yes. up, he was up ladders to yeah, be fair. Yeah, he got yeah. the full glory of his legs. <laughs> They're in his shirt, he's got his shorts on. Whoops, that's against the rolling pin. But they love the colour and they love how quick you rolled it out. And you'd be very gentle with I that am, sharp knife I am on my board. Very then, gentle. <laughs> Just because we're friends does not mean you can chop Bef up my board. Before they all at me yeah. <laughs> and start yeah. messaging me. I've got one myself, so I know. I promise. Just use the very tip. So this is going straight back into the bag. I like that. Don Jeffrey says, um, yes, but we only wanted it a few degrees higher, not through the roof yeah, with the bells on. This is the thing, it's got really extreme, yeah. hasn't it? I was talking to my daughter in Australia yesterday and I went, oh, Del, it's so hot here. So she went, what is it? I went, 28. She went, oh, it, that's cold. It's like <laughs> autumn. Yeah, they're like what 39 or something. Autumn. They're not 39 at the moment, they're cold over there. But Honestly, I don't yeah. think you just couldn't function. I'd, I mean, they all have aircon, don't they? But that's the difference. Yeah. It's like um, people delivering to um, delivering cakes to wedding venues over the weekend. And of course, in this country, we don't bother putting aircon for our weddings. So, Maureen's going, um, they're saying, uh, Oh my God, how quickly did you cover that, Rachel? There's no faffing where our Rachel's concerned. Tell you what. <laughs> now, you will see that Rachel is using the FMM smoothers, which we do sell. Um, I'm trying to convert her to the Barina smoothers, which now belong to Sugar and Crumbs. I've got she, a set. She's got a set, but she didn't want to go live with them because she's actually never used them before. <laughs> so, but let me just have a play <laughs> <laughs> before I make it look really bad because I'm cack handed with them. <laughs> But no, I will do. I'm going to be covering a lot of cakes over the summer. So they will get used. And then I can come back on and show you them another time. So why is it much better to roll it bigger than your cake? Just so that when you're coming to put it over the cake, you are you can just get it on quick and get it secured. And you're not like, oh, I've put it slightly to the left and now I've got a big gap here. Or I've put it slightly too far That's forward and I've got a big gap at the back. You don't have to be as like exacting and precise, like checking all around yeah. as you're putting it over. You can just drape it over and you cut off the excess. Yeah. But that's we're going to use that green anyway. And you I could do. use that to cover your board or we're going to use it for ruffles anyway. So. And Geraldine Allen says, well, Rachel made that look hard work. What you've just done there. I am there, sweating. <laughs> what you've just done there is every girl's dream is watching this. You've, didn't you throw that on that cake and cover it? Look, so all of us now would still be faffing around with frill with the frill on it can't be faffing gotta get it on get it on get it secured so this is really soft because obviously i've just done all that kneading and it's so warm in here so i've added a lot of treks so this is softer than what i would usually use because um if i'd done that i would usually then wrap it up into a ziploc bag and leave it till like the next day to use it because um it will kind of re-firm again but so I wouldn't usually recommend doing precisely what I've just done no. because it, I can feel it is really soft and squidgy. Yeah. But that you would have that with any paste, like when, when you've like kneaded it that much. Well, Julie Moore, Maury is 48 degrees in Abu Dhabi. Oh my and God. But they're, but they're started all that started mentioning the knife on the pink board. <laughs> pink board's fine, I promise. I was dead careful. I usually cut it on, on a ganache in plate, actually, but I didn't have one. Right, next question. So Jamie Scott says, thanks for your reply about the colour paste and gel. It is for colouring marzipan and researching this, one lady said paste was better, but I've only dust and gels. Will the marzipan be spoiled or go too loose with gel? No. 
don't think so. I don't. I've never. I don't think I've ever really coloured marzipan. Well, I've coloured marzipan, and I've never had a problem with it at all. The only thing I know with marzipan is don't use corn flour. Use yeah. ice and sugar to roll yeah. it out because corn flour reacts with the marzipan yeah. and can cause problems. Yeah. Yeah, quickest cake cover ever. You are. I wish. I mean, I've got a lot to do. I'm like, yeah. I've got the fear. That's off on Harlem horses. <laughs> Julie Moray, amazing how you covered that cake so fast. Fondant, fondant goals for her. They're all there. But see, they're all in awe of you now. They're gonna. You have to put that back on replay later. So later, <laughs> later on when you was want it to too, know. Was it too fast? Later on when you want to know how to cover a cake because you're all chatting through this. Go back and do the replay. You might miss it. <laughs> and Annette Lawson says she wishes hers went on that good today. They're all saying I'd love to be able to cover a cake. What size rolling pin was that? It's a 24 inch jeans, and isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a non stick rolling pin. Super easy. And also, like, obviously, I'm saying that this is really soft at the moment, but with this board, I've not used, I popped a tiny little bit of corn flour on the very top of my ball of sugar paste but that was so that my because it was there was a lot of treks in it like you probably won't be able to see that so even with the non-stick I just didn't want it pulling because there were, it was very it was very it was more sticky than it would normally be because it's just so hot so Michelle Fitzsimmons is saying unsure regarding using gel in marzipan I would probably use paste as marzipan has oil in it Perhaps someone else has tried a gel and would comment. To be fair, I've, I've, I've used the colour splash in it, which is water-based, but I only do a very light colour. So if it's got oil in it, then I would go for your colour mill. But just try a small yeah, amount. Just exactly. break off a little bit and mix it in, and if it starts to look a bit yeah. weird, you'll know, Stop, you know it doesn't yeah. work. And then, But I do that all, I've do that. i done that loads of times. I've just done a little bit of a experiment before like ahead of time where before you needed it um and then and then you know for sure lisa mel says anyone would think you've done it before <laughs> once or twice <laughs> yeah i said right here we go this is where we'll start has rachel got any more classes coming up has she got any more classes coming up I you're have. joking <laughs> amy get on the website she's got she's got I've loads of classes two, coming up i've set two up which we put back to autumn yeah so the first one is October and the second one is November. So yeah. it's basically we're having a bit of a gap because I've got a mountain of a uh, backlog of wedding cake orders that are now taking place. So Rachel's quite right there. What happened is with COVID last year we could do all the classes through the summer, but this year with no, with 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 the Boris saying we were definitely going to come out of the lockdown. We decided then that you guys will probably want to be going on holiday in August or you're going to be busy with cakes. Mm -hmm. And the best thing to do is to move all the classes to September, October and November. So there's no classes in August. Um, and mainly, mainly because it's warm and sticky and everything else. So the only person who will be around will be myself, the buttercream flowers. And um, I'm doing a cupcake bouquet class sometime there as well. But um, everybody else will be starting their classes again in September. Um, and if you want to buy classes, put them in your shopping basket. Don't put any products in with them. Select, click and collect so you don't have to pay shop uh, shipping prices. If you want to buy in bulk, you can phone the office and set up a payment plan. Or you can pay by PayPal free. PayPal free, which is an, inter <laughs> which is an interest free payment option. I've not done that PayPal thing yet. Steady easy. The multiple ones. Yeah. But yeah, so there's Oct October is a ganache masterclass. So, um, and actually, I'm seeing loads of people at the moment who haven't yet learnt how to ganache cakes. And at the moment, they're on a hide into nothing with this weather. So, you know, it's difficult part way through a season to completely change your process because obviously you won't have quoted for ganache and all that stuff. But so it's a brilliant time in the autumn to learn the skill and incorporate it into the quotes that you're pricing for next year because this happens every year. We get a heat wave at some point every yeah. year and the same thing happens. You see it everywhere with people panicking and having absolute nightmares. And um, yeah, it's just, you, and the answer is ganache. Um, so if you're sugar pasting at all, the answer is ganache that you need to be putting under under your sugar, yeah, yeah. Under your sugar paste. Um, so 
definitely if you are experiencing problems with your the buttercream under your sugar paste cakes at the moment definitely get signed up for that one in the autumn so that next year you've got a, a fail safe method and you've got time to practice it and quote for it and incorporate the cost into your, into your quotes that you're putting out yeah. Um, Rachel's already done cl done some classes. She's been in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen loads of times. Rachel is, is a professional and amazing at what she does. Aww. And if you are going to book on her classes, you are every penny you spend for those classes is worthwhile. Forty pound. And we've got um, her next one of her next classes as well. She, I'll get her to show you in a minute when she oh, gets yeah. a breather. Um, but they're amazing. Breathe them. Well, you can never breathe them. That's how fast you put that on. You don't know what to do for the next I've got half loads. Hour. I've got loads to pack in. <laughs> so um, I'll get her to show you the cake because it's just over there. What you're going to make in this class, it will be amazing. Yeah. So if you join any of her past classes, you will learn so much. There's lots of ladies here watching tonight who are members of that class. And I'm almost sure nearly every member, every person who's a member of those classes will join Rachel's classes for October and November. They may not join at the moment because they're thinking about holidays, but I'm almost sure that they'll all be joining as it gets nearer to the time. Do you know what's been really nice since the wedding started again is yeah. that people are posting pictures of their first ever yeah. wedding cake in, in the two classes or the first ever sugar paste yeah. or the first ever buttercream one. And I love seeing that. I'm like, it's, I'm getting such lovely feedback and like, progress from people from you know the stress that they were anticipating so good 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 question this one so i know this one will trex change the taste no it's a it's a vegetable fat it doesn't really taste of anything no. so it's kind of flavorless it. Yeah. and it just kind of ab it just gets absorbed into the sugar paste so no and christina lansdale hill says it's just so calming watching this Though I'm sure it's not for Rachel. No, she's I am very so hot. wetting. <laughs> she's very it hot. It sounds so attractive. <laughs> I said to my um, husband, um, "Can you run me a cold bath for when I get home tonight? <laughs> it's going to run me a nice cold bath, just chilling before I get into bed. Because it's always a late finish, oh, isn't I it? I could have a bath. I could have a cool shower. I can't have a bath. Yeah, but then my hair's soaking, and then oh, yeah. Clean it up. I, d I need to just stick it under. I just, oh yeah, no, I'm having a cool bath. So we'll be a gal in the water. Just cool down before bed. So, um, so Nikki Fan, uh, Nikki Fan, Who? Nikki King <laughs> has got a fan on there, and she said we don't know what she's wear, don't want to know what she's wearing. Well, based on that, I think we do actually, Nikki. <laughs> we do want to How know what cryptic. we're wearing. Yes, it definitely won't be a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and Wayne from Australia has joined us so Hi, we've Wayne. got yeah so we've got um we've got the lady from Julie from Abu Dhabi Wayne from Australia if there's anybody who's new just pop on say hi let us know where you are we're a really friendly bunch um Karen I used your smoother uh, last week and they are great thank you Lee Lovely. pleased with that so the smoothers that we've got, they're Verena's smoothers, and Verena has gone out of the cake industry now, and we've actually bought the brand off her. We've changed the colour, okay, so they're bright red. I was just laughing with Rachel <laughs> and how red they are. Um, I did want pink, but I can't get pink for the life of me, and the other cho choices was black, navy blue, whatever. But what I will say is, and one lady did say it to me, one of the tutors said to me, well, I'm always losing my smoothers. In fact, you said this yeah, well, yeah. tonight. I'm always losing my smoothers and uh, definitely won't lose those. So I'm trying to get a different colour, but at the moment we're going to have to get rid of all the red ones first. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad you like them, Lee. They're definitely not going to get lost. Yeah, they're not. I don't know. Uh, I asked um, the office to send out um, sets to all the tutors. I'm hoping they sent you both sets, the set for the big cakes and the set for the smaller cakes. Yeah, I got both. Did you get both? Yeah. yeah. It was a lovely surprise. Yeah, a lot of the shooters. You don't get nice posts often these days. See, it's yeah. always just bills and yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's this? But then I always forget what I've ordered as well. So I just think it's something I've ordered that I've forgotten about. Got to laugh at this, Geraldine Allen, Nikki King. Because this is a decent well-being group, and we only have that malarkey <laughs> on the private classes. I love that word, malarkey. Except that's not true, is it? There's plenty of malarkey that goes yeah. on in these lives. <laughs> so I have noticed that uh, Rachel has been cutting on the board. 
But has she said in her own words, she's got a board herself and she knows how gentle to cut down on it? I was barely, I was barely putting I any pressure. I know you were. I felt it. Did you feel it? <laughs> I'm, I'm sat right up close thinking. She is. She's like literally, <laughs> literally the meter away. <laughs> yeah, lots of people have said they've loved your classes and that your recipes are lovely too. So why don't you tell them about your recipes? Yes, yeah, so the recipes we put out. Um, Oh, over a year ago I started putting them out now. So I've done, I was doing like free recipes in my group, in my Facebook group during lockdown. The very first lockdown, I basically did a recipe share every single day. So there's free recipes in my group, but then as I went on, people started asking for, they were just like my favourite bakes and stuff like that. Then people started asking for, you know, what recipes do I use for my wedding cakes? So I've put a couple of different collections together. Um, and there's some bundles on there as well if you want more than one collection. So there's the Luxury Wedding Cake Collection 1 and the Luxury Wedding Cake Collection 2. If you go to the website, which is www.ma.cakecompany.co.uk uh, and go to the shop, they'll all be there. So you can click on each of the collections and it gives you a detail of like what, what recipes and flavours are in there. Um, there's, I think there's like five or six different recipes in each collection and there's like flavour variations and baking tips and um, like a, a thing to, to upsize, you know, so my standard one is always in like a six inch, but you can scale up. Um, so um, yeah, they're on the website. There's then like a festive, a festive recipe collection on there um, and then some recorded tutorials as well. So there's also a ganache and buttercream basics PDF which is lots of recipes for buttercreams and ganaches and different flavours and colouring and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot of resources on the website if you want to go check it out. Just reminding the website it's name. It's www.ma, that's for Marie Antoinette, cakecompany.co.uk. It's dead easy that, ma.cakecompany.co.uk. Yeah. And just click on shop because it's, it's my wedding cake page, but if you just go straight to the shop, um, there is a page for the Sugarcraft School and then there's also the shop which is all uh, products for the, for the Sugarcraft School. Um, there's some sugar flower classes on there that were run last year that you can buy and obviously get, get the recorded version and get to keep that just like you do with the sugar and crumbs classes. Um, but yeah, just you can go and have a, a mooch and see what's what. Yeah. So if you want to buy classes, there's two lots of classes. There's the ones on our website, Sugar and Crumbs, which Rachel comes and does here in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, she's got two previous classes and two up and coming classes. Mm, she's so she's got, um, uh, what was it called? The, fir the first one that you did with the butter. That's it, Introduction to Buttercream Wedding Cakes. Then she's done the Introduction to Sugar Paste Wedding Cakes. And da -da 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 -da. let me talk about this in a minute. Then she's going to do the master ganache class. Now Rachel's been very kind enough to come in here and use ganache, but she's going to do the master ganache class. And I've just seen that Sally Gilling has asked, is Rachel's ganache master class in October suitable for beginners? Oh yeah. And so, then do you want to tell them what you're going to yeah, do? Yeah, so there? on that we're going to cover basically everything to do with ganache. So we're going to do milk, dark and white chocolate. So I was just panning out to get this giant in. Um, <laughs> Uh, we're going to do three different ways of ganaching. So we're going to use the uh, ganaching plates, Bridget's cake ganaching, Bridget's ganaching kit, um, and also the, the profoster. Pro yeah. So, so you, loads of different ways to learn yeah. how to ganache because everybody will find the one that they like. Yeah. So if Rachel shows you all of them, then you just go and play. And we're going to do um, round and square on there so that you've got yeah. both covered. Um, I think we're going to use the square ganaching kit from Bridget's because I've only ever demoed the yeah. rounds, haven't yeah. I? Um, so we're going to do that. Um, we're also going to do talk about um, colouring ganache and um, also decorative techniques with ganache. So we'll do dowling and stacking as well, but we're also going to do decorative techniques with ganache. So. A lot of people either think your finish has to either be sugar paste or buttercream, but actually um, you can do a lot with ganache. So buttercream is quite restrictive in terms of the effects that you can then do on top of it because it's obviously soft and it still ha has moisture. Sugar paste is obviously sets firm and it's dry and so you can do a lot more on, on it. It's like a blank canvas and you can do so many different techniques on it. Ganache is like a middle ground, so but not a lot of people think to actually use that as your top 
coat, if you like. So we're going to do some work around using ganache as a top layer um, to kind of create like a really nice middle ground. It's also a really good middle ground price point as well for, you know, if you're and charging nice for cakes. Luster, aren't they, as yeah, well. and you can do a lot with them. And so we'll be having a play with that. And you can, you know, you can do things on them that um, are quick but you can't do, quick and easy, but you can't do on buttercream. But if you are not comfortable with sugar paste, or sometimes you might have a customer that comes to you and says, we really don't like sugar paste, but actually they might be having a wedding in a marquee in August in a heat wave, and you go, I don't really want to put a, a buttercream cake in there. A ganache finish might be the perfect sort of um, balance for you. It's also really nice for, um, they're so quick to do compared to sugar paste, they're much quicker. But they're much, obviously you can have them at room temperature, maybe not on a day like today, but normally they don't have to be kept in the fridge till the last minute. Um, once they're set, they're firm at room temperature. So we're going to do a lot, um, a little bit of um, decorative techniques using ganache as like a finish rather than just using it as an undercoat and then you've got to sugar paste on top. So that's that one. And then the second one, which is November, is the Wedding Cake Masterclass and we're going to do this. So... This is basically assuming that you are already um, confident or happy with the sugar pasting. So you might have already taken the sugar paste class that we did uh, in the spring. Um, or you might have just been using sugar paste for years and you just want to come and have a play. Um, but we're going to go through all the different decorative techniques on this cake. So hand painted calligraphy, sequins, sugar flowers and leaves. Um, colour washing, these beautiful like, um, they're like silk ribbons, interwoven silk ribbons which are colour washed using moulds um, and anything else that we've got time for on the day we will pack in. But um, yeah, obviously it depends how and the day goes. Let me just advise, for those two classes I don't advise you do anything alone no. with Rachel. I we, advise you sit back with all your snacks nice and comfy and enjoy. It, the classes that I do are packed and we go at pace so um, it's in terms of we, we do go at pace like because I want you to get as you know, much as out of it as possible that cake then. yeah there you go. <laughs> um, I want you to get as much out of it as possible and I know that you can watch it back so for me I'd rather you had something you can watch back that has as much as possible in it than if I was having to wait for people to get caught up and then it's not you know for the people that aren't doing it live with me it's quite frustrating because it would then be quite slow so um yeah I'm gonna pack it full and um yeah, hopefully. Well, this is going to be an gonna amazing be cake. You're going to love this. And not only that, if you join Rachel's other classes as well, those are good starter classes. Yeah. And But the, this cake you're going to love. And Rachel's master class is to make sure that you know everything. So you never go back and have to ask anybody. You will know it all. So just a question. Sue Mary said she bought your recipes, but there was no chocolate cake. Do you have a chocolate cake recipe? There is a chocolate cake recipe. Is it is it in a in the is it a first. bundle or is it on its own? No, it's in the bundle. It's in the first bundle. I so think. Sue Mary, it's in the first bundle. But what I would do is is message Rachel and then um, let her know which pack you bought, and then she can sort it out for you. But yeah, yeah. there's definitely a chocolate cake in and there. Who is Kerry Wilson? Oh, Kerry's a good friend of mine. Right, okay. She said, "You who rage? <laughs> have I missed? Have I missed any fun and frivolous? Fr fr I can't get it out." They were waiting for you, Kerry. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> But we're just waiting for it to take a close off because she's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah, is very hot. Might be stripping off any minute, but yeah. <laughs> other than that. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Let me just grab it forward and get move this around. So what I'm gonna do on this, so I'll just make sure that you we've covered this one. So I've covered this yesterday, it's quite firm, this one's still really soft. But this is quite nice and firm now. So if you were doing something like painting, I would cover it overnight and then it's ready. It's really nice and firm, like super quickly for you to paint on or anything like that. Quick question. Debbie Taylor says, are you doing transferring onto boards once ganached? Transferring onto boards. So when you ganached your cakes, will you be transferring them onto a board? Like a baseboard, does she mean? Yeah, so like if you're going to do your ganaching and decorating them, I presume you're going to put them on a board. Aren't yeah. They? yeah, yeah. And they're saying how tall the cake is. It is Nearly tall. as tall as half of them. <laughs> uh, we've had to put it over there because we can't fit it in. I know. We can't cupboard. open the cupboard doors. <laughs> oh, no. We're taking it down to the warehouse on Thursday. 
so that the people in the next two demonstration days can actually see yes. them. Because we think it's much better if they actually see them and then they'll want to join the class. Plus, I think um, there was, I didn't want to make it smaller because it means that we can't, can't put as much on it mm. in terms of different techniques. So well, it just gives it was you the a space. question, it might have to come back. Can we have a closer look at the bottom tier, Simon? Yes. So can we bring it back and have a closer look Definitely at the bottom tier? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. We'll do that before the end. We'll bring it back before the end so you can have a closer look. And I'll get her to go through it with you again. And Susan Gardner says, Rachel is a fabulous teacher. And to be fair, <laughs> everybody loves Rachel's teaching. You've all loved her in the kitchen. She's great fun. And Kerry Wilson says, oh, God, don't encourage her to strip off. Why not? <laughs> Kerry! <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right, that's so it. She's making it out like I do all the time. <laughs> not that again. <laughs> Geraldine Allen said, it's getting hot in here. Let's all take our clothes off. <laughs> And my lilies look great. I must admit, they're probably the best bunch of lilies I've been bought. They've been bought by a personal friend, a lady who used to work for me. And uh, she's moved on now. She's set up her own business. And uh, she only left last week. And she sent me those with the most beautiful card of how she's enjoyed working with me for the last five years. And uh, I just said to Karen this morning, they've just opened up beautifully. But I took all the little yellow heads out because uh, there was a proper pong in here with them. And they, they're a nightmare to they, they stain yeah. things, don't yeah. they? The pollen. Carol, is there a limit on the number in the classes? The classes are online classes, Debbie. So no, there's no limit. You sit at home in the comfort of your own... I was just going to say high chair. You sit, <laughs> we you won't sit, make you sit in a high chair. No, you sit at, at, in the comfort of your own home with your own snacks and treats. You put your large TV screen on and you watch it on there, on Facebook on there. Providing you've got a smart screen. But you'll be able to watch it back as well, whenever. Yes, and the thing is, the class is yours. The good thing with us doing online classes now, from having them done in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen, you learn far more, because the tutor has got time to actually show you more, whereas when she's in a classroom experience, she has to run around all the other students to get them up to speed or to help them out, and you end up missing quite a bit in some classes, or running yeah. until about 8 o'clock at night if you can't get it all done. Or you'll find that the, the tutor is under a massive pressure to get you done for five o'clock. So this way, when it's an online experience, if you sit back and watch, not only do you get to keep the class and go back to it for reference and reference, the tutor has the opportunity then to show you everything she possibly can. Just and all the, tutors who, all the tutors who work with Sugar and Crumbs, I will tell you, they all excel themselves. They can't help it. Every, I have not had one tutor in here that has not excelled themselves. They all give all their hints and tips, everything. Not only that, they share their lives with you because while they're here, they're chatting away about what's going on in life. And, uh, it's and you just get to ask questions. Like on the classes that I've done, people are asking questions about just, you know, like my experience of running a cake business yeah. and, you know, all that kind of stuff that you just never really get the chance to ask someone. Yeah, Lisa, I pulled all the middles out. Don't worry. The dogs won't be getting I pulled them all out this morning. I've got a couple that have not opened yet, but I think they'll be open by morning, so I'll pull them all out then. So I'm just using this multi-ribbon cutter from, I think it's FMM, is it? FM, I think yeah. it's FMM. Do you have a foam mat, Carol? You know the... The foam mats are in that drawer down there. Thank you. Uh, just been asked, when's Lee Carroll on? We, Lee Carroll is back on next week. And I'm sure he is doing this lilies. He's watching, so he'll tell you. Um, he's watching, Lee. So, Lee, just remind us again what you're doing next week. I know you've told me. So, it's Flower Pro, and um, I can't remember what it is that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's lovely. So, Lisa Williams says, I'm in two of Carol's classes, and they are fantastic. I am learning so much from the classes and learning and love watching the lives, too. Aww what we like to hear yeah so I've just set this this multi-tool here you can decide how wide you want it by just there's all these different little spaces and you just decide how wide or narrow you want it and it's a really good way of getting something if you want a repeat pattern to just get it consistent and not having to then cut it with your knife it's much quicker as a strip cutter so what I'm doing is I'm just using the ball tool to thin both edges of these I'm going to thin one edge, but on the other edge, I'm wanting it to be a bit more ruffled. That makes sense. So we're going to thin one edge. 
And I've popped it through the pasta roller because it means that it saves me a lot of time rolling it by hand and it's really consistent then. Okay, so with this, I'm just going to measure that. It's a bit taller than that. I'm just going to show you a set of these. We're not going to be able to do the whole cake because it would take all night. So Antonia Regan says, I love all the lives and she misses us all at the weekends. Oh. So I've just seen that uh, Lisa Matusha has just asked when our flavour shots are ready. The order has gone in, so we're just now waiting for the printer to confirm when it's our turn to be on the printer. If that mm -hmm. makes sense, that's about the easier to... They have to check everything, come back, confirm everything with us, and then they'll tell us when it goes to print run. Um, anybody who's coming to the um, demonstration day um, next Saturday and the Saturday after, we're going to give you a sample bag. So they won't be in the proper bags, but we're basically going to give you a, a sample. Which will be nice. Yes. Karen's making them tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> And that's lovely. Uh, Nik Nikana says, Thank you, Carol. SNC has kept us sane in this surreal situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes, we've been very, very busy bees. Um, I think uh, with, uh, between us and Cake Flicks, I think it was only us and Cake Flicks that was actively um, active nearly every single day. It's a Cake lot, Flicks, though, isn't it? Cake Flicks did every Saturday. And the, what Cake Flicks did every Saturday, getting all those juices on every all day, was amazing work. I don't know how Paul did it from people all around the world. And then we kept you all busy through the through the week. The plastic wallets we do sell, they're called Stay Fresh mats. Okay, um, Stay Fresh mats are absolutely brilliant for keeping your sugar paste um, protected. So it, it basically gives you a bit longer to work with it so that you can work on a couple at a time, yeah. whether that's flowers or things like ruffles or anything like that. You can cut, you roll out and cut out a bigger amount rather than having to just roll out and cut out a small number, do those and then go back to rolling out and cutting out again. Yeah. It's quite stop start that way, whereas this is, it makes it quicker. So these have got a hinge on, they're A4 size, they've got a hinge on and um, they're great with them. I wouldn't be without them to be honest. So I'm just popping a little bit of water onto the cake and the reason I've covered in the same colour is so that if, I, if there's any gaps or anything like that it doesn't matter. You're not going to see through them and also I'm not going to cover the top with ruffles so. Oh, I think I'm on fire me. If you've got a cold drink, I've got cold drinks. Do you need to get some ice or something out of the freezer? <laughs> I think I need to go and sit in the freezer. I was telling Siren I drove over and I had the aircon on and an ice pack on my knees because <laughs> it was so warm. <laughs> Ridiculous. Luckily, we had when we had the work done on the kitchen last year, we um, we had aircon put in, so our kitchen is cold. like 19 degrees, and then you walk out into the hallway and it's like getting off a plane. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, John and I are lucky because we've got aircon in the bedrooms. I've no idea why I put air. I put aircon in the bedrooms and in the conservatory, but nowhere else else in the house. And I think I put it in the bedroom so I could sleep at night. Yeah. But I've never put it in here in the kitchen. We had portable ones, but I've actually sold the portable ones last week. Did you? Yeah. Well, I Someone's sold them. really grateful for that. Oh yeah, they were dead chuffed. But I sold them last week only because they make that much noise in here, you can't hear nothing. I've got a portable one that used to be in my old studio and it's yeah. now in our home gym because yeah. you don't, it's noisy yeah. enough when you're on the treadmill yeah. but it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, we got a proper like wall one yeah. put into the new kitchen. And I need to get a wall one put in here. It's, it's an absolute, honestly it's been brilliant. But yeah, the portable one was brilliant, it was only, I mean it still works fine but it is noisier definitely. Yeah, but really noisy. Um, for like a smaller room, it's brilliant. Yeah, for a couple of hundred quid, I think it was. Yeah. And my other problem is because this place is open plan, it can't 
Yeah. It doesn't warm it, it doesn't cool it, 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 do, it does all right, but. Yeah. Trouble is, as soon as every, as soon as people go, right, that's it, I'm getting air con, everyone's trying to buy it at the yeah. same time. So I'm not measuring the placement of these, I'm just doing them by eye. Um, and of course, you don't have to do them this this width. I've done them much narrower before, but obviously if you're doing them narrower, it's going to be more detailed and it's going to take you longer to get round the actual cake. Can I put that on a turntable and turn it up a bit? So, okay, if you've got that on it, can you see that close enough? Yeah. Yeah, just so it's higher on that camera for you. See the back. Yeah, that one's all right, isn't it? Do you want to move no, it? Yeah. I didn't know she lifted the cake up a little bit higher. So I can sit when you've got it going from the side on the front. Yeah, there we go. That better? Yeah, it is. That better? Yeah. Well done, Great. Carol. Yes. Just so I think you can see the detail better, that's all. So obviously I've, I've, I've made them taller and then I just cut them off with a craft knife. So rather than having to measure the, the exact height of each strip, I'm just putting them on with a bit extra height. I'm going at an angle there because I'm working at an angle. Um, and then I just cut those off with a craft knife. Every so often I'll just go along. So I'm just going to do another set of these, I think. I'm not going to do keep doing them because I'm going to get onto the... So the demonstration days, just to let you know, the demonstration days, we can, we're, we're putting 30 into each session, uh, two rows of 15 we're doing, so we're doing a U-shaped table and we're doing two rows of 15 and then obviously there's um, some staff members. Uh, when you arrive, we, you can arrive anytime after half past nine and the latest half past ten. And we do give you a little goodie bag to go home with. So as much as you're paying, we do reward you with a little goodie bag for um, uh, to go home with as well. If you want to do any shopping, you must do all your shopping with Click and Collect before, if you want to collect it on the day, you must have your Click and Collect order in before 1.30 on the Friday, okay? If on the day you do shopping, then you'll order it on the website and we will dispatch it on the Monday for you. We can't actually pick any orders um, actually on the day it becomes a bit chaotic. So um, if, you can if you can do that, that would be great. Um, we're going to provide you, uh, Michelle Quinn is watching, so she is going to pick us up some treats from um, Costa. And then, um, so that you can have a, a coffee and a cup of tea and a, a, a pastry. And then lunchtime, there is the local McDonald's, Subway or Morrison's. And, um, and then you come back, there's two demos. So this week, it's Karen, she's doing chocolate. She's also going to use the new concentrated flavoured icing sugar, which is perfect for flavouring chocolate. And that's why you're going to get a sample in your bag. So we'll be selling those in 50 gram pouches and we're actually going to give you a 50 gram pouch as well as um, so the, some other bits to take home. And then I'm on in the afternoon and you're all going to decorate your own cupcake with nifty nozzles. That'd be fun for me. So <laughs> and you best get it right the first time. <laughs> they're going to decorate them live with you? like um, I'm going to do Or you're going to demo? I'm going to do a couple. And then I'm going to pass the bag of buttercream round and a, a oh, sweet success cupcake. And they can all decorate their own cupcake, which they can have a cup of tea later. Perfect. Yeah. And then next week we have Marion Frost in from um, Patchwork Cutters and Karen Davies in uh, from Karen Davies. <laughs> Off of Karen Davies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as I say, everybody who comes, it doesn't matter which week you come, you'll go home with a little goodie bag as a little treat off John and I. So just to make it worthwhile. And if you don't come, unfortunately you don't get nothing. <laughs> not saved for you it's basically because we don't if we don't if we didn't want people to um we didn't want to say the demonstration days were free because people would book on and then not turn up mm. we didn't want to charge a fiver because people will book on and not bother turning up we wanted to charge 15 pound and then give you something back and then those people who didn't turn up well there you go and it's just a nice chance to meet up with people isn't yeah it? Don't worry, I've got you eyeballed for. 
was going to say. Um, I just need to get your weddings out the way. Yeah, just let's just, don't I tip me I over was, the edge. Just I thought I don't even mention it to you or <laughs> Jerry Chu or or anybody at the moment. So get the weddings out the way and then mention Su- to survival is yeah. <laughs> we're just survival is our yeah. main uh, priority right yeah. now. So don't worry, I'll be eyeballing Rachel for the October one. I'll give her the date and see if that's any good to her. October or November one, because then she can promote her classes as well. I'll be doing I'll be doing some it. lives anyway, then yeah. ahead of the classes so that yeah. if people have got questions about them we can remind them what's happening. Um, Jane asks, are your nifty nozzles back in stock? Yeah. Don't nifty... know whether she means mini ones or normal yeah. size. Uh, no, they're not. So the mini ones, if you remember, they're on a six to eight week. I think you lot don't know how, but I think Ab, your time's flying fast, but we're only four weeks into this since they were first ordered. So they're on a six to eight week lead time. And then the larger ones, um, I, haven't, I've, I haven't placed an order. I've sent over what I want, and I'm waiting for them to come back to confirm I can have them. So we're just going to have to wait patiently for them. But as soon as they're ready, I'll be letting you know. I think people are... A lot of people are saying about the air conditioning units, how noisy they are. They are, yeah. The one in my bedroom, it doesn't help that the actual... The mechanics outside is vibrating against my bedroom wall. <laughs> so... Tap, 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 tap. Yeah. So I have to get John to go and put it on. He's gone and put it on now to cool it because the windows have been open all day. So he's gone and locked up all upstairs, put the air conditioning units on. And then when I get in bed, I have to turn it off. Then in the middle of the night, I have to put it on, <laughs> watch my iPad for a while, while I cool down again. <laughs> That's hilarious. Pardon? That's hilarious. Yeah. The things you do. Well, I can't cope with it. Uh, what are the shots, please? So the shots are our new product, mainly for abroad. Okay, so we need to get our flavoured icing sugar and flavoured whipping it up abroad. So this would be about three years ago I came up with this idea. I've had my graphic designer design the bags. In fact, I'll go and get them actually. Let me just go and get some samples for you. So I'll just uh, get Rachel to show you. So I'm just lining the bottom up with the bottom. So you don't need to obviously then put any ribbon around the base of this, this cake. And then we just cut around the top. Now, usually I would let this set up the day before, before I then go and put the ruffles on. If you're in a pinch, you don't need to do that. You, you can obviously see they're going on absolutely fine. But just so that when you go and take this knife along, that this this is soft and this is firm. Um, so that this cut, the, the ruffles cut, but this doesn't. But we're just going to have to try and be careful with it. I'm cutting really gently so that I don't cut any of the sugar paste on the actual cake because it's still really soft at the moment. You could also just use a small like sharp pair of scissors if you wanted. That's quicker. Okay. So I've just done those and I'm about a third of the way around the cake already. Um, so it's quite a quick effect and what we're going to do, so what I've done previously is then just um, picked out some of this ruffle detail once it's set up a little bit with some gilding um, but I'm just going to use this new product from that the Carol's started to stock from Squire's Kitchen, it's Gold Leaf Flex. So you could obviously gild with a little brush and brush down um, pick out some of the ruffly bits um, or as much as you wanted of the ruffly bits but we're just gonna I'm not sure the fan's a good idea for this <laughs> need to turn, turn the fan off for a second I'll just have it pointed at Carol um, because it will go everywhere how do I stop it yes yeah, so, I mean you might have to do that because <laughs> it will blow this gold leaf everywhere so what I'm going to do is just grab a thin brush, so there's um, edible gold leaf you can get which is in like transfer sheets which you would use if you were like covering a whole tier 
And then, this is probably best on the side camera sermon, I think. And then these flecks are what you would use with just a little bit of water to wherever you want the fleck to stick to. And then just pick a tiny bit off with your brush. You might find it easy with two brushes. And just transfer it onto where you see that? I'll just get a second brush to help. So we've got a wet brush and then a dry brush. So the wet brush is just creating a little bit of water on the ruffle. And then we're just going to drag this along. And it should just stick to wherever there's water or moisture. And where there is none, it won't. Like that. So you could probably do this tier like just random little spots just to to bring out the detail. Uh, oh my gosh, with one part, with one part of this, um, I'll have to ask Carol how much it is when she comes back. But um, yeah, it's a nice little addition, and it's something that's really really nice for weddings, especially with dark colours. I think it just picks out the detail really nicely. But like I say, you could use the Wonder Dust with, and create the edible paint if you rather, but the, the metallic leaf is just that little bit, it's got a higher sheen to it, so it is a bit more reflective and it's just that little bit more luxurious if that's what your customers are wanting. But I have also done it with the Lustre Dust as well and it also looks amazing. But like I said, you could create finer ruffles if you wanted it to be slightly more detailed just by changing this. So you would um, change the spaces. So you just undo the spaces and change the, the order of things um, to maybe then put something like that in the middle instead of one of the bigger spaces and then just thread it all back on again and tighten it up and all of a sudden you've got a different size cutter and I think it comes with a swirly um, this is the straight cutter but it comes with the swirly one as well um, there's probably an official term for that that's not swirly but I don't know what it is so yeah a little goes a long way with this leaf I've barely used any of it and it's just super easy to use but yeah definitely have a wet brush to wet the to apply the water onto the paste and then a dry brush to take this out if you're using too much water um, the gold leaf will just disintegrate it doesn't like too much water so you don't need a lot of water it's just sort of sparingly and that's the same as if you were using like if you were covering the whole tier with you know the transfer sheets but these little pots will last for ages you just need to keep them airtight and away from moisture Place on and it'll stick wherever there's water. I'm just going to add a little bit onto these last few and then we're going to do something with the top tier. And I am going to put some luster on that top tier as well. So like I said earlier, some of the sugar pastes I wouldn't be able to get thin, rolled thin through the pasta roller and I would have to mix them like 50-50 with a flour paste because they're just too soft and stretchy and when you're pulling them through the pasta roller they would just become really um, misshapen and they would yeah, basically just tear. So um, whereas this one has gone through it fine, so that's, like I said, it is, it is firmer than some of the paste if you're used to you used to like Renshaw, you might feel that this is noticeably firmer, but if you've used the Tropic before, you won't, you won't think that when you open it up and start kneading it. Yeah, I'm just going to pop a little bit left on these last few. Carol, how much are the flakes, the gold leaf flakes? What How's that? Carol will know. <laughs> Don't know the day. 
like I said, you wouldn't even need to use this whole part for oh, this no, one here. Oh. So a little does go a long way with it, definitely. Sorry, I don't know where my pre-printed ones are, but um, I printed some more off so you can see them. I'm just going to fold them up. So just to explain what the shots are, we're doing a concentrated shot of the flavoured icing sugar, 50 grams, and a concentrated shot of the whipping it up, 70 grams, so that we can get it to America and Australia. Oh, I, I guess the shipping's very expensive, so we're just That's waiting clever. for the bags to come. Yeah. So, but we have so we've had them printed these bags for such a long time, and then with Brexit, I've just had to have the designer redo them all because obviously now we have to put our European address on, um, and then we have to um, also now think of some of the labelling for Europe how they want it and then for the Americas because we're gonna what we're gonna do is gonna have to put a little sticky label on the nutritional label. So anyhow. Do you want me to show this on camera? Yeah I'm just doing them all now. Yeah I'll do them all so okay. I can make you show them all. So I've just printed these up on the computer so you can see them and fold them up. But the one thing that we've realised is is that the flip the icing sugar flavouring um, is perfect for chocolate, for flavouring chocolate. So those who are coming to the demonstration day on Saturday, Karen is going to show you how to make flavoured chocolate and then you can flavour your own and flavour your own. Well, providing that we're selling that flavour. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be nice then that you can flavour your, flavor your own. And like I say, we're going to give you a sample, but it will be in a white bag, it will be in a clear bag. Just make sure you don't get pulled by the police because no. I think you'll have something else. <laughs> <laughs> so, with a sticky label on that says coffee or something. <laughs> oh, I think she's making lemon, lemon strawberry coffee and I um, can't remember the other one that she's doing. So I'm just going to put some mustard onto this top here. Um, that so looks I've lovely with the gold on. It really, really nice it out, against the green. Because it looked it? quite flat before, even though it was ruffled. It, colour-wise, it looked flat. So I'm just adding some of the wonder just dust. Just those little tissue, little bits. It's hardly any, isn't it? Yeah. But you could do that with the wonder dust if you don't have the flex. Well, I've it done would it be with nice those. with the wonder dust to paint the edges. You could yeah. show them that. I've done that on on some of my cakes before yeah. with these. Just paint the um, edges. Yeah, just. And again, you don't need to do all of it, like you can just break it up slightly. I think you've done it on that wedding cake there, haven't you? Yeah, I have done it on that, yeah. yeah. Okay, so slightly bigger brushes, Carol, where are they? In here? Right in that cupboard, yeah. There we go. So with the shots, what this basically means is, and we'll be doing videos for it, um, you just add your shot to your sieved icing sugar. Now, if you want to use it straight away to make buttercream, that's great. But if you want it to infuse so that you can make meringues and other things with it, we're going to show you what to do with it then. So I'm waiting for the bags because we're all waiting to make the videos. So I've just mixed some of the Pearl Snow, it's called. Wonder dust with some dipping solution. And you know what, I've not used this colour at all, but it looks lovely when you use it. So I think I need a bit more in because I've made it a little bit too liquidy. So this is just to give it, so I'm keeping the pink tones, but it's going to give it a bit of a slight shimmer and it will just take the pink down a slight touch. So if you ever do cover a cake and it's a little bit, you, you look at it the next day and you go, it's a little bit too much or too, you know, I need to tone it down a little bit. Sometimes if you are mixing colors, it can be a bit tricky to, to know. Then you can add like a luster over it, like a white luster over it and it will just sort of tone it down a little bit. It won't work miracles because at the end of the day, if you've made it really bright and it wasn't supposed to be, then you probably need to just start again, but um, it will definitely sort of tone it down a little bit. It's like whitewashing um, 
something a little bit. But while we're just talking about colours, I just wanted to say, because I used to really struggle with colour mixing, and one of the things that I found really useful is on the Massa website, they have a colour mixing guide. So you can click on there on a particular colour that you're trying to create, and it's like a colour wheel, and it will tell you the proportions of which of their well, pre-coloured mixes. It? Yeah, so it can be like, and they're quite, quite nuanced colours, so it could be like a particular shade of teal that you want, and it will tell you how many parts of each of the colours that you need to mix together. Because I used to waste so much time and energy and money, like product material, um, mixing colours because I didn't have a really good understanding of what, what shades went in to make certain colours. And I would spend ages kneading the colours together and adding loads of paste in, loads of gel colour in. To then end up with something that was like not not what I wanted and then I've got all this coloured sugar paste that I couldn't use because it was the wrong colour. Um, so definitely go and visit that, it's just on the Massa website. Um, I can pop a link in actually on the comments after this, I'll do that tomorrow and you can find that. But um, it's it's such an underutilised resource, it's amazing. Well, send me the link and what we'll do is we'll get it copy and pasted to the group. Yeah, because it's so easy yeah. and then you know exactly what to order and what like what proportions and quantities, which can be tricky to know like if, you've, if you're not used to like mixing colours and things like that. So what, what makes you choose the white snow then? Because I still want it pink, but I didn't want it any more pink than it already was. So to give it a sheen? Yeah, to just give it a slight shimmer and to just make it the pink a little less obvious. Mm. But obviously that depends on what project you're after. Like for some people, the pink, the way it came, like the more bubblegum pink is, might be perfect if that's, if they're look, like going for like a more tropical cake or, you know, princess cake or something like that. Whereas this is the kind of pink that you could easily see on like a wedding cake. So, I'm just going to leave that a minute just to set up. So I've just gone gently around and done two coats of the luster there. I've not added any dry brushing on there, I've not buffed it, I just want it quite subtle. I'll just wipe that down. As usual, I got it everywhere. So when we launch this product, we're hoping to, and we think we've already got slots on other platforms in America, to do lives on their platform. So of course you can come and watch us, but you, you'll watch us anyhow because we'll pop up live, but um, you'll be, you might see us at some strange times. So Karen and I and the camera crew are going to have to work some... So you're doing, you're going to be on other people's, like American, yeah. like American yeah. versions of you? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So rather than me stick this on with um, Royal Ice and I'm just going to secure it with a wire for now. Set, just give that another minute before I touch that. And I'll just secure it with that wire so that we can carry on working with it. Hands a quick wipe for it, isn't it? How are we doing for time? Got that one. 20 past nine. Okay. What well, I'm just going to put those You can do it. So I'm just going to put those there so you can see those. So I've just printed those off on the printer. So they're the Whipping It Up flavour shots now. So in there, what flavours are we doing there, Rachel? Can you see? So we've got strawberry milkshake, salted yeah. caramel. That's the generic bag. So we can put any flavour in them. Okay. Yeah. Um, then there's the white chocolate and raspberry, raspberry ripple, velvet vanilla and lemon, lemon drizzle. drizzle. Yeah. So those are the whipping it up. So that means that we can get these shots over to America and Australia much cheaper for shipping. And we're probably going to sell them in bundles for people abroad to make things look a lot easier. So that's if you want to make your Swiss meringue buttercream, your meringues, everything like that without having to um, add egg white. And then we've got the flavour shots, so they're whipping it up shots. Mm -hmm. Then we've got the flavour shots then, which are the icing sugars. So people abroad, when they want to buy icing sugars, so these are our tester ones first. We're not going to do all the flavours yet. So those are our icing sugar ones. That Those are the ones that you can flavour your, your um, chocolate with So as well. 
This is lemon drizzle. Your generic one. Generic one, soft caramel, white chocolate and raspberry, strawberry milkshake, raspberry ripple and velvet vanilla. Yeah. And black cherry didn't hit hit it, unfortunately. Oh really? No, I can't believe that black cherry just does not sell the most amazing flavour out of all really? of them. Really? I know. So those are the flavour shots, ladies. I hope you like them. Now those are not the bags. Okay, the bags are going to be slightly bigger than that. That's what I managed to print off on the printer. But um, I designed, I had these designed three years ago. <laughs> and then they've been sat there waiting for John to get his wallet out. <laughs> and then by the time he's got his wallet out, and I think he's really quite chuffed that he didn't, because with Brexit happening, we had to send them back to the graphic designer to have um, them all redone. So oh. they've all had to be redone. So I'm really glad about that yeah. anyhow. And then... So um, so I think you're going to love them girls. So you can buy them here in the UK. Some of you will probably prefer to carry on buying the big bags. Some of you who live in smaller places might like the little bags. So you can just have them to your ice and sugar. So you can buy ice and sugar from anywhere and just drop it in. So it saves cupboard space. And those people who are abroad, well there you go, it's going to save you a lot of money on shipping. Mm. And we have a lot of customers in America who buy our ice and sugar. So we're just going to start off with this at first. So just when I let that pink tear just dry off, it'll only take a couple of minutes. Oh that's lovely. Leslie Green said, Carol, it's worthwhile going to your events, I'm sure. You and John are very generous. I say this even though I'm not going. No, we try to we try to be as fair as we can. We try and do everything that we can. Um, but anyway, I hope you like those. And then let's get um, Rachel back on what she's doing here. Packaging's nice. Yeah, the packaging, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to have to run by loads of um, comments here because I'm way behind with being in the office. <laughs> so I'm just mixing up. I've got a pack of white and a pack of ivory. The ivory is actually one of the nicest ivories I've seen. Some of the ivories, I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but some of the ivories are quite um, quite dark, quite um, almost what I would call like a caramel or a, like a beigey brown. Um, whereas this ivory is really lovely. quite subtle. Yeah. like. Well, Geraldine Allen says, don't worry, we've got another two hour shit break, so don't <laughs> I don't mind. I always feel like I'm like um, going over time and then it's like I worry about keeping everyone else. Yeah. So Anne Meacher, the Queen of Hearts piping bags. Um, the Queen of Hearts have not been able to get any. Um, apparently they've got to place a huge order and they've just not been able to do that at the moment. So we've actually been out of stock for a very long time. I've actually taken them off the website um, and have taken Simply Making off as well because they can't get any. So at the moment there's just the sugar and crumbs ones on there. And that's simply because we can get bags but nobody else seems to be able to get them at the moment. <laughs> a lot of things have changed haven't they? For... Uh, well there's, there's a lot of suppliers that aren't actually um, supplying stuff anymore. The other thing is you go to suppliers now and the shipping costs are horrendous. Yeah. That by the time you factor in, into the product, it's actually not worth selling the product anymore. So the Whipping It Up offer was on for four days. Um, it was on Friday, no, three days. Uh, it was on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And um, there was a few sneaky ladies I saw got it this morning because I didn't turn it <laughs> off until like 11 o'clock. So we do give you a long time on these sale offers, you know, these little bonus offers. And Roxy Pavel says, the pearl snow is beautiful, it's just like silk. To be fair, that's what I was trying to get at. You don't really see the pearl effect, but it, you do when you're looking at it, it gives a silk finish, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it yeah. just tones tones down, yeah. and it, I think it just it stops it from being flat yeah. to what it is You've now. You've caught it a couple of times yeah, before it's I'm going to cover it now, so. Yeah. <laughs> cover some of Sorry it anyway. to tell you. Anything. I know, I saw it, I was like, well... <laughs> I'm not going to sweat that because oh, no. I'm going to put a cover wrap around it in a minute. Are you going to put a wrap around it? Are you? Some of it. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Not all of it. So you'll still see it peeking through. I've not done this in ages, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> a little bit sticky because it's so warm. Uh, 
Um, so a good question. Um, if on the day you can't make it, there's nothing I can do. So if you've been pinged or something you can't go, there's nothing I can do. I, I have to say that you've unfortunately lost your money, and I hate to say that, but there's really nothing I can do about that. I, I'll be putting on an event that, that's going to cost money, and um, we've got to factor those things in, and I just... I just can't do nothing about that. I've got staff working that day. They need paying and um, I can only be as fair as I can. I can't take on the responsibilities of COVID, unfortunately. When is it? Saturday. Ah. Yeah, so um, a lot of people getting pinged at Yeah. Them, so I have got face masks for everybody. So I've actually bought them. So bring your own face mask. But to be fair, I'm going to ask you to take one out of the box. I brought face masks. We've got... Um, We've got a hand sanitizer. If obviously you're having a coffee and you stood away from people, then feel free to have a chat. I don't mind that. But when we're sat around watching the demonstration, I've got some lovely, nice uh, pink face masks. They're exactly the same as the hospital blue ones, but also pink. Of course. Really? Yeah. Just think. Just ask people what they're comfortable with. Like I just always think, like, yeah. if you're not sure, just ask yeah. ask the other person what they're comfortable yeah. with as well. Yeah, no, we can't take any rebookings. I think Karen Neil has just said that you can rebook, but no, if you can't come on the day, there's no rebookings. I can't, I can't do nothing. Um, I, at the end of the day, if I, I've got, I've got to go with it. Um, I've got people coming in, relying on it, and I, 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 I can't do it. Sorry. And like I said, I try to be as fair as I can with everything. You don't get off any other company like you get off me. I think you all have to give me a bit of a break and think, you know what, that girl does as much as she can. I can't do any more. I can't keep just giving, giving, giving. Uh, they said it's stunning, the pink and green together. There is a thing saying pink and green should never be seen, but I disagree. That's red and green. Is it? I've heard, people have said it to me about when I've used pink and green together before, and I'm like, I think it's nice, but I don't know what the issue is. Um, is Rachel doing a demonstration day for us? I have mentioned it to her uh, when she was last here, but I thought I dare not even think of mentioning it while the weddings are back on. The donkey on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> um, she come flying in here tonight and she is mad busy and the fact that the, the heat is hot, <laughs> so... Um, so the heat is hot. Of the heat is hot. always hot. Yeah, so the, fact the that heat is on. Yeah, the heat is on. The heat is on. Both ways. It's survival mode at the moment, people. <laughs> I know some people will be watching this will be laughing because they'll be in exactly yeah. the same position. Okay. So let's just see if that's still tacky enough. So in true sugar and crumb style I'm winging this because it's been ages since I've done this on a cake so let's see, I'm just reapplying a little bit of this, this that's got something in it. Yes, well you should have checked it first, shouldn't you? Oh, so um, on the day, if you have asthma, will you need to wear a mask? I think we just need to be very fair about this ladies, right, okay, I'm not asking you to wear a mask, I would appreciate if you did wear a mask. At the end of the day, John and I have got a workforce in the building and we have not had one member of staff with COVID. Which is in amazing. A, which is amazing. And none of their family members have. I've had my sister with COVID, but in the production and in the warehouse, not one member of staff has had COVID. And that has actually been amazing. I have to give John every I have to give John all the credit for that. So if I'm having you in the warehouse. I'm not asking you to walk around with a mask on. I'm just asking you to sit there and just watch the demonstration with a mask on. Now, I can't force you. There's no rules for me to force you. And if you don't want to wear it, fine, fair enough. Everybody else will have their mask on. I'm an asthmatic myself. I don't like wearing a mask. And I, you know, I won't be wearing one, but I will be stood back from you all. But when I'm walking around with you all, then yes, I will. And if I'm going to give you a hug or you want to give me a hug, then I will be wearing a mask. Way too big. Today's the first day where it's not a legal requirement, isn't it? Yeah. 
That's what I mean. I can't force anybody to wear a mask. Do you know I just what? Want a lot everybody... of places are still asking just, people to wear Yeah, them, I just want everybody to use their common sense. I, I can't afford on Monday or Tuesday to have a ping in our warehouse. Yeah. And that's what I can't afford. Because if our warehouse goes down, we're closed. If our production goes down, we're closed. I'm just asking you that while you sat down next to each other, will you wear a mask? So I've bought medical ones, you should be fine. Okay, but if you can't wear them, then of course I can't force you to wear one. And can we not have this discussion here? I'm trying to do a demo here with Rachel, <laughs> you know. Can we just stop it? Okay, so at this point, I'm just going to then start tearing, which is going to sound really awful, but it's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear so I've got like a jagged edge. And you'll probably need to support this. Rachel, could yeah. you just come back into the middle? Into here? So I can just go to the overhead. That's yeah. And you'll need to support this on your cake for a little while while it sets, but it won't take long to set. Probably take long. Oh my god, no, that's <laughs> longer than we've got on this live, but yeah. Let's go back to the hot heat. Well done. <laughs> let's go back to Rachel's thing. But you know, as I say, you know, we've all got issues. We've all got things going on. As I say, I'm a bad asthmatic myself. But I just think while we're sat down, it's not really hard work. I'll be having the warehouse um, doors open, well ventilated. You know, we've just got to be safe, girls. What is this effect you're creating here? Because at the moment it looks like you're just tearing off your Well, face. I am. <laughs> but I'm sure it's going to be amazing. I'm actually quite fascinated I'm just what creating you're doing. And a jagged top so that right. then I can um, pick out the lust a bit. What you'd need to do is just support that for a little while. So, just make sure it's nice and secure on the top. Well, Elaine Morton says, Rachel, you're doing a fantastic job there, job there, and I am fully engrossed and I'm <laughs> loving it. So, you see right. how these are just flopping over here? So, at this stage, you would just get something like your cornflower pouch and just prop it and let it firm up against the cornflower pouch. And you'll just be able to see here, I've created this torn effect. And we're going to, once that's set, you can just luster with a really fine brush all along that torn effect. You don't have to do this. You could leave it just all pink yeah. underneath if you wanted. But it's kind of, you just pulling and pinching and tearing, or pulling away however much or a little as you want. Like I say, just pop something on it to support it, and you will be like that for a little while. Don't worry about it, just keep working around. And then we don't want any sort of smoothness to the edges, we want it nice and jagged so that we can pick out those details with some luster dust, even if it's pearling. But Put peeling back a little bit, that's absolutely fine. Like that. We're good. just going to, while that's setting, just get our smoother. Charity now. Oh, I love that fly zapper. <laughs> Makes it us all jump. Scary. See Simon go up. Touch the ceiling. I know the first time I saw Simon jump, I, I laughed, and then <laughs> and then I keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I'm doing it on camera, and Simon didn't do it on camera. <laughs> Linwood Ward says, I can do that torn, in fact, torn effect. Anyone Very can learn. Very easy, but it's never meant to be torn. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, though. Once you go and have to go and do it deliberately, you probably can't do it. <laughs> so I know, thinking, I know. Why can I not do it now? I'm just getting leftover sugar paste here, and I'm using that to just prop it up. Well, Geraldine sense. Allen says, just my style, pulling, punching and tearing. Mm -hmm. Donna Jaffrey says, yes, I bet you've got a red room, Geraldine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
uh, Mr. Gray. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to smooth off where we want it to be smooth. Just See, I would never have put those colours together, but I do have to agree, they look stunning. Who would have put these colours together? Oh, your husband's tuned in. Has he? He's checking whether you're coming home early tonight. No. <laughs> <laughs> have you got the aircon on, Richard? Yeah, I'm sleeping <laughs> in the kitchen tonight. <laughs> Our bedroom is usually quite cool. It's like faces north, so oh, yeah. But even these last few days, no. it's like no. <laughs> yes, they love the effect. Yeah, I would never put these colours together. It looks great. Pink and green. And obviously, you don't have to do Look. this particular shade of pink. No, well, green was my favourite colour before sugar and crumbs. So you used to have everything green. Did you? I remember in the last house I lived in, and I had this really soft green on all the wall, on all the walls. And then somebody came to see me, and they went, "Did you get this paint cheap?" I went, "What? Well, <laughs> it's everywhere." Who is, who would be so rude? I know. I was well cross. Our um our old office was a really really dark green, like darker than this, and pink, and I loved it. It was really calming. Yeah. I mean, mine was a pastel, a very, very light pastel pink, but yeah. I loved it. But they said you got it cheap. Nice. <laughs> uh, Lee Carroll says he loves them, but he thought it was red and green should never be seen. Well, it oh, isn't see, red I and was green. Told it was pink and green. It's pink and never green. Be seen. It's definitely red. Is it? Yeah. It's not red. It's pink. No, oh, the, the oh, saying. Yeah, the red, saying and green, red and green. The saying is red and green. Yeah. Oh, see, I. I always thought it was pink. But pink and green, absolutely. That's because somebody said that to me once about a cake that I'd done. Pink and I... green, like a dream. There you go. It was on like a dream, yeah. <laughs> so, so I hope you're enjoying this live tonight, and I hope you're going to give the Mona Lisa a go. So uh, I think you're going to love it. Yeah, hopefully now you know a bit more about what it is and... Like the Australians say the blue and green should never be seen. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, like rugby who, shirts and yeah. stuff are all with blues and greens and stuff. Pink to make you wink, you're right Jackie? That's definitely right. Yeah. <laughs> Hope all is okay Mandy. Barbara Runcorn is saying that it's, it's Runcorn is saying that it's blue and green, never to be seen. I always thought it was red. See, it's funny, it's up and down, different parts yeah. of the country, isn't it? So there's quite a few now saying blue and green, but we've always been red and green, should never have been seen. Us northerners. And I thought it was pink. You thought it was pink? I've never had that one. Just because I remember it, somebody said it once about a pink and green cake that I made, and yeah. I was like, oh. A bit like you were with your wall colour. An answer to your question, Carol Allen. Yes, it is an acupuncture needle that Rachel is using. Yes. They're just super fine. And they're loving the live. Oh, the red and greeners are coming out now. We could have this conversation a bit like the scone, isn't it? Do you put your jam on or your cream on first, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So all of these bits we've torn off, just get them scrunched back together and you can use them again. And that I would just leave overnight now, just leave that to set overnight and it will be lovely and firm in the morning. But if you need it quicker, you can obviously mix some Tyler into it or you can mix it 50-50 with um, flour paste if you want, if you need it to set quicker. Oh, your mate, your mate's on, Kerry, she said pink and green should be seen. Think about a gorgeous pink rose with a calyx. Yeah, exactly, Kerry. Yeah. Well, you can say that about any colour but green then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Any flower back. colour, exactly. <laughs> I like that colour. <laughs> Steph Hill, I don't know where you got that, because I'm from Cheshire and it's red and green. <laughs> We're starting <laughs> something, aren't we? <laughs> They're all going on with themselves. Right, jack it in. It's whatever it is in your area. We're moving and, on, people. <laughs> and you can stop with the jam. What is it? Joy. No, no, I'm all right. Have you got a drink out of it? No, I'm all right. I've got water here, thanks. So... The other thing I'm going to do with the um, paste is, I don't know if I forget to do those, 
I'm just going to show you um, using it with some moulds and cutters. Because it is firmer than quite a few of the other pastes um, that are on the market at this price point, um, you can actually use it for some things that perhaps you would usually perhaps use with um, flour paste or you know that you've added tylo into or something like that. So this is the one that we've just wrapped around the cake and pulled to pieces. <laughs> Move that around. Um, so I just want to show you on the overhead, these. this is just with some of the green that I used yesterday. So these two here, I made these leaves using the normal leaf cutter and veiner and that actually had some tylo added into it and they were made yesterday and they've set firm. So it had um, the normal amount of tylo that you would add in, I think typically it's like a teaspoon to every 250 grams or something like that. And that's set firm and Carol's felt these and they're, yeah, they're, they're firm aren't they? They're with tylo. I was actually quite impressed with that. These are the ones without tylo and they're just as firm. So yeah. these are just the paste like straight out the pack and these two here were made in the Kate Sue Designs mould. Um, and then obviously you can use things like the little cutters and things like that. So I'm just going to make a couple of leaves um, with the green paste from earlier. Well, while you make that then, let's sort this out now because Debbie Hargreaves has very kindly gone on to Professor Google. <laughs> the phrase, red and green should never be seen, is a traditional fashion maxim that or originates from Britain. The phrase refers to, refers to the fashion belief that colours red and green should not be worn together. Blue sometimes replaces red in this advice. The phrase is sometimes modified to red and green should never be seen without a colour in between. Ah. Or red and green should only be seen upon an Irish queen. It is possible that the phrase may also refer to the running lights on ships which have traditionally been red on one side and green on, a, on the other. If another vessel saw green or red lights ahead in the dark, it would mean that they were on a collision course. Well done, Debbie. Sorted it out. Yeah. Us northerners, Sh right again. We, we did need all just <laughs> <laughs> drawing the line under it. So this is a really good all-round leaf mould. Um, it's from Katie Sue, and it's really nice for doing uh, leaves that you can just sort of uh, apply straight onto a, a cake. So I've just dusted it with a teeny bit of corn flour and you might need a little bit of corn flour on your fingertips as well to stop it um, sticking to your fingertips and pulling back out of the um, back out of the mould. I'm just going to put a little bit on the side here so I can keep popping my fingertips in. And just fill the mould. Now that as a leaf, it's fine. But we're going to do something else to it. So we're just going to thin round the edges with the ball tool. Only the edges, you need to do the edges. And then we're just going to pinch down the middle. And then you can just dry that in your dimpled foam. Ooh, nearly lost something off the end of the table there. Just dry that in your dimpled foam. And after an hour or so, depending on the humidity and the condition in the room, depending on the time of year it is, um, you'll be able to just, even not this right under normal conditions now, you would be able to use that. It's still quite floppy at the moment, but if, you know, after half an hour or so, you'd be able to apply that onto your cake. It wouldn't be firm set like this. These have been left overnight, but um, you could use it to pop onto your cake after, you know, after not so long, depending upon conditions. But let me just make a couple of more. And I'll just show you the difference between one that's been um, thinned at the edges and one that hasn't because one is quite chunky looking and the other is just looks a bit more realistic. And of course once they're set you can add some petal dust. So um, I did on the introduction to Sugar Flowers, which was my last live, the free live that we did a few weeks ago, we made some rose leaves and we dusted them. So watch that back for that if you want to add some more realistic, it really transforms the dust, when you use the dust it really transforms the leaves. So if you look at, I don't know how, if you can see this on the overhead Simon, the thick, the difference in thickness on those edges, is that showing up okay? Yes, very, very well, yeah. So this one's been thinned with the ball tool and this one is just straight out the veiner. 
And the difference is like, it takes you a few seconds to do and I'm just pressing on those very edges, maintaining the shape, just pressing on those very edges so that the, the volume is still in the middle but we've taken the edges down, it's nice and fine and it just gives them some finesse. Just pinch down the middle, leave to set in the mat. Right, why don't you do a couple more of them? Mm. So just before we finish, we did say happy birthday to Lee Carroll and Lisa Matusha. So have you all got your singing voices on? Okay. <laughs> so are we ready? You ready? No, yeah. Uh, Lisa. Right. So it's Lisa Matusha and Lee Carroll. Now get your voices ready, girls. Nice and loud in your lounges <laughs> so all the neighbours can hear because you've got all the windows open. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. So happy yeah. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lisa and Lee. Happy birthday to you. Woohoo! And then I also remember that last Thursday I was supposed to do the draw for Laura. Um, Laura's Bakes, Laura wasn't in last Thursday and I did the live instead. And there was a competition on for the bakes for Laura. And then uh, there was another competition that we had on as well, but I can't remember. But I'm going to let Rachel do her um, live, finish that. And basically, I'm doing the live on Thursday. I'll do everything then. But I will need one of you to remind me, <laughs> okay? Because otherwise, I'm going to forget. Can you remember, Simon, by any chance? I can try. What was that I've got to remember? <laughs> <laughs> remember that I've got to do the... Um, Laura's Bakes competition and there's another competition but I can't remember what it was. Then Simon's not likely to remember is right, it? Do you know what I'll go over to the page. I don't want to go over to the page. I can't go to the page because the live's on now. But if anyone can remember what the other competition is I'll let you know. Somebody will. So that's the leaves. So we've just very quickly made a selection of five leaves, two different, three different sizes and they'll be, you could pop those on the cake within half an hour or so and obviously you could add petal dust to them as well or just leave them like that um, then with the flowers just got a little bit of green in there going back to the small rolling pin oh it's the fun font yes right well done right can you make sure now on Thursday it's Simon, myself and Viv Goddard and Viv doesn't know this but I'm going to put Viv on comments, Karen's offered to do the comments but I thought Viv knows you all so she can do the comments. Can somebody just remember it's the fun fonts um, competition, it was right a few words, well done Chantelle. So I know when I finished Thursday's live I thought oh my god I forgot to do the draws um, and I've sat here and just remembered now but um I don't want to do it, I don't know, see how we are. Have you got much to do there that I can do the draw with? A time wise, you mean? Yeah, can you do a few things while I go and do the draw? And you pick the winner, or do you need to keep talking? No, no, you can right, let me go and do, do the fun, let me go and do them now actually, let's see if I can find them one second and get them out of the way. Yeah, no problem. Right, because I'll get Rachel to pick them. So the, let's find the competition. So I've just rolled this out to probably about one to two mils thick and I'm just cutting with a selection of little cutters here so this is the blossom who, who makes these blossom right, this is blossom figure. sugar art now I will tell you blossom sugar art is closed down last month has it yeah so she's just said um, so I can't get much stock off her actually I need to in fact I've opened up an email so she's one I need to call I didn't know that I think it's been copied by China that many times she's given up. Uh, so I'm just using my Dresden tool to lift these out because if I try doing it with my fingers I'm just going to mangle them. And you might find that you need a little bit of corn flour on the actual mould just, just rub a little bit in or some people use Trex even. Um, and then again you can pop that into your dimpled foam or if you've got like a little paint tray with little round shaped holes you can use that. Just pop that to dry in there. 
but the sets are really cute because you get loads of different shapes so if you're trying to make like lots of little blossomy things it's yeah they're quite nice actually i only sell the multi sets because you yeah. get the other little cutters in them so i've still got them in stock but i don't know how long i'll have them in stock i'm going to send her an email in the morning i've just sent myself a note to ask her right prize giveaway here we are this is for the fun fonts collection oh crikey there's 148 comments right because you've had to wait i'm going to draw two winners okay <laughs> how good is that so um so what if i put that you're going to win there <laughs> so did you watch the fun fox collection two cookie set yes yeah, so the fun fox collections um collection two cookie set to be fair i don't mind which fun fonts you choose and um, might go a little bit more crazy in a minute and do a few more winners. So let's just get that, let's just get loaded up. These centers here, like you can obviously use petal dust on these and these centers here are really nice. It's got a nice detail on that you can just go in and paint with a little bit of gold luster just to pick out the centers. Really cute. Right, so I've made the decision. Let's go for it. Cause as you know, I'm always really quite generous. I'm going to pick three winners. So let me just get this under the camera. Rachel's here. She's over here. Right, I'm ready. ready. So when you're ready. Oh, right, I'll who's that? Right, it's okay. Well, Sue Mary, you'll be well chuffed. You're a winner. So you can choose any one of the fun uh, fun fonts. Um, so there's, uppercase, there's, um, there's the uppercase, lowercase. You can choose the specials or you can choose the cookies. So let's choose another winner. So that's congratulations, Sue Mary. She'll be over the moon. Anytime. I'm going to do it again. Okay. You ready? Right, who's that? Kate Edwards. Okay, so Kate Edwards, congratulations. Right, go on then. Oh, you just missed out there, Michelle Quinn. <laughs> you always tell people <laughs> okay. when they didn't win. Right, let's just go around. Let's go back again. So, there we go. And that one is Pam Taylor. So congratulations, ladies. So that's three winners. There was only going to be one prize, but I've decided to give away three. Did it say three or four? You said two. You said two, two, and you've done three. Oh, and I've done three. Okay, well, you know what? Let's do one more. <laughs> Let's do one more. Right, so sorry, sorry, sorry. When are you ready? Nobody told you. Right, what are you on there? Um, Amy, Amy Smith. Yeah. Okay, so that's four prizes. It can't be any fairer than that, lady, ladies. So that's Amy Smith. That's Sue Mary, Kate somebody, I can't remember who it is. Karen Naylor, can you write these down? <laughs> <laughs> can you not all remember who it was? You can just Sue Mary. That, and I think it was Pam Taylor. So Pam Taylor, Sue Mary, a lady called Kate, I can't remember the name. Oh, Kate Edwards. And the last one was Amy Smith. So congratulations, ladies. You win a set of fun fonts, okay? So you can choose either the uppercase, lowercase. You can choose the specials. You can use, or you can choose the cookie set. There's two ranges, collection one, collection two. I really don't mind which one you choose, to be fair. So that's four prizes. Wasn't too bad that we was only going to give away one, okay? So let's go back to the page now. Rachel, do you want to tell them anything while I'm going on no i'm just repeating the same right. thing so, thank you for that rachel so let's go and find the winner of laura's um tray bakes how many of you actually did the tray bakes now obviously we can't taste the tray bakes so we can't comment on the quality of them so you were asked to pop a picture on okay and basically we're going to do exactly what we've just done now we're just going to flip it up and down and um, Rachel is going to choose a winner that's a nice way but I'm just going to check that you all qualify because you have to show the picture with your name with a piece of paper with your name in front of it okay that's just so I hate to say this you don't make a picture off Google so <laughs> oh, we've got it all covered here you know girls so let me find the thing. So I can't read what you're saying about the live because the congratulations, because I'm here now. Right, the fun fonts, that was the 8th of July. So when was Laura? The 8th of July was last week, was that? Oh, no, because it's the 19th today. Just try and find Laura's tray bakes post. It's looking for the uh, dipping solution then. It's on top Ooh, of the cake. There it is. Right, let's see, it looks like 17 of you have entered. Oh, look at this. Let me just have a look. Your names in front of them. Names in front of them. Names. Oh, look at this. 
Oh, look at this. This is good. Oh, God. oh you are also good. Wowzers. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. What did I say you were going to win? <laughs> right. To enter, you need to be right. Okay. Um, I will send. I will put a bundle together for you. That's what we'll do. And I am going to pick two winners instead of one winner. So Rachel, that makes it good because there's only 17 of you there. What I'm just going to do, some of you have put several pictures. So I'm just going to delete. Actually, no, you've done two servings there. So if you've done the same one, I'm just going to delete one of your pictures. Okay, just... To make it fair because if somebody's put loads of pictures on there's more chance of you getting picked so I don't want to do that okay right okay then right right okay then did those who entered did you like it so let me just oh cracky let's do the post there in fact, I'm going to have to be really gentle with this one because. Yeah. Um, so there's the. Right, at the post. I'm going to have to go into the post. I'm just gilding the very edge of this. It's still, still obviously a bit soft and fragile, but if you're really, you're not putting a lot of pressure on. You mainly just touching the brush to it. And this is deep rich gold. Mainly just touching the brush to it and letting the liquid just sort of seep into all the little crevices. I've got air bubbles on that I can see now. I'm actually going to write these on a bit of paper. Okay. Because I can, if I spin it, it goes to the next post. Yeah, it's not a long enough no. list. Not a long enough post. Have you got a pen there, Simon? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can grab one. I've got um, an so edible I one. <laughs> I still can't read your comments because um, I'm not on the live. So I'm not ignoring you. Just notice in the camera I've got a few little bits of air trapped under where we've wrapped this. Mike right. says, great job as always, Carol. Well, great good. job. What have I done? I don't know. I don't know what she's referring to. <laughs> just, just take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just giving away all the fun points. Yeah, yeah probably that. Great yeah. job at giving stuff away. Yeah. <laughs> John's not watching. He's actually very good, John. To be fair, I always joke about John not watching. He, he lets me do what I want, to be fair. I just like to wind you lot up about him. He's actually not a Mr. Ogre at all. He's actually very good. He's actually probably more generous than I am. And I think the girls will tell you that in the office. I'm very good about lots of things. I'm one of those people who will help you and give you anything. But my God, if I lose a pound, am I on search for it? <laughs> I can't sleep. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so pathetic over some things. <laughs> John looks at me like, Cracky, you've just done that and you've done that and you're whinging about that. Doesn't get it. Right, let's get a bowl out. Oh, can I use your little dish here? Mm. Save me moving anywhere. So let's see how many. Let's put in the competition. So these jagged edges right. along the top are perfect for just picking up all that lovely lustre. Whereas if it had been a smooth edge, it just wouldn't. It would. They just wouldn't flow into all the little cracks and crevices, which is why it was fully intentional to rip it to shreds. <laughs> right. So for those ladies who've won. Uh, what you need to do is go to info. Dot, Sam is putting it on the bottom of the screen. Info. Dot sugar and crumbs at iCloud. Dot com, and say that you won on the fun fonts competition, and let us know which set you want. And I'm really pleased all those ladies who ordered on the tray bakes, not ordered on the tray bakes, who's done the tray bakes. Uh, 
and I hope you like them because I thought they were delicious. I still can't read your comment because I'm too busy writing this. Now, if you did one of each of the tray bakes, I'll put your name in twice, but not if you're just showing off the pictures twice. Don't pick yet. Okay. I'm not ready yet. You can see it's starting to hold its own, but to be safe, oh, Rachel, that looks beautiful. I would still just leave it overnight propped up. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Especially in weather like this, because, yeah, I don't know if any of you have experienced like any problems with um, like your sugar flowers sort of wilting or anything like that, but you know, it's any humidity and stuff, and things will just take that little bit longer to just set and things like that so but you really kind of can't go wrong with this because it's just you know you just you saw you just tear at it <laughs> until you've got it and I think probably where it was a bit clumsy looking is because I'd rolled it too tall to begin with so just remember to measure the height of your tear when you're rolling out and not roll a piece that's hugely taller than what you need so you don't have loads of excess paste to deal with like I did. I'll have to say I'm impressed with all your shirt tray bakes. There you go. Thanks Rachel for letting me do this now. It's okay. Saves me a load of hassle. Just thought poor Viv got out of it stuck on this on Thursday. She doesn't even know she's doing comments. Unless she's watching. <laughs> unless she's watching I was gonna say. <laughs> doesn't she? <laughs> I might ask John to do comments yet, we'll see. It's just that Karen and I have got a hard day in the warehouse on Thursday. And um, and then we're in the warehouse on Friday. Then we're working all day Saturday. So I just thought it'd be unfair to ask her to do the night shift. Eh? Thursday night, me. Don't worry about me. I'm like an ox, I'm strong. I just keep going. It's like um, finding Nemo, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. I, I, my girls, they all know, they don't know how I do it, but I just keep going and know. going and going. Even when I'm completely exhausted, I just keep going. So these leaves here are already now starting to hold the shape. They're still soft, but they're holding the shape that we've formed them in. You can see there shape that we've got on them rather than the flat ones that I just quickly did because I didn't have my foam mat yesterday to hand so they're already starting to firm up and that's just with the sugar paste so you could then start adding these on if you wanted and sort of trailing them up um, obviously you couldn't they're too soft and they're not wired so if you were wanting to put them use them actually in a sugar floral arrangement you would have to wire them um, and they would need setting overnight and I would probably for wired ones just to make sure that the wire is nice and secure in there I would probably always just advise to add a little bit of Tylo into it um, or mix it, you could mix it 50 with sugar paste uh, florist paste, sorry Right, so in this prize okay, whoever wins I'm going to put in a little bundle and I'll also put in some white Mona Lisa paste for you. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. There you go. So I don't know what will be in your bundle. I'll have a chat with Karen Naylor tomorrow and she'll get it together. So if you are a winner for the fun funds, you need to email info.sugarandcrumbs at icloud.com. You've got seven days to claim. 
and um, if you win tonight info dot sugar and crumbs at icloud dot com and tell them that you're the winner of the tray bakes yeah now let's see how we get on so we need to find a winner for the tray bakes I'm going to get the lovely Rachel to be the picker how many am I picking? Hey, okay. how many are we picking? we'll just do one for the moment see what mood I'm in <laughs> Just never know what's going to happen. Know, Karen Naylor. <laughs> right. So, Karen Naylor, you're the winner. Now, because you're a staff member, I have to do this again. So, you get your prize. They are for. Well done. Congratulations, Karen. She <laughs> Congratulations, did both. Karen. She did two of them, actually. Linda Slater. Linda Slater. Congratulations. Come on, let's do a third oh, one. Oh, my God. We're going to end up picking them all out by the end of it. Everybody wins. Yeah. <laughs> Shelby Beden. Shelby Beden, that's right. So, go. ladies, all three of you are winners of a bundle. So, info.sugarandcrumbs at iCloud.com. Okay, and we'll sort out the little bundle and we'll get it in the post to you. What I'm going to do with the other ladies who emptied, who, who emptied, who entered the competition, on your next order, okay, I'll give all the names to Karen. On your next order, just say you want a free bag of icing sugar in the competition, all right? And um, I'll get Karen to put it, pop it in your order for you. So I'm now going to rate, go back to comment. She's going to tell us what a wonderful company we are, <laughs> what a great person I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is now we've discovered the real reason why you give stuff away. You're doing a great job as always. Get yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'll go back to lives. So just remember, ladies, I know you're all out and about and playing, but Sugar and Crumbs was with you. Make sure you stay with us, okay? Right, I need to find the live again now. <laughs> don't know where it is. But these are still a little bit soft to go on the cake, but we're just plonking them on anyway. So don't forget to like and share everybody, like and share, not into the classes, not into any miserable groups, only to all your friends mm -hmm. who are cakey people. Don't forget to like and share everyone. Brilliant. Sam, Georgie Gobble says, Sam, I don't think you're supposed to laugh. I'm what? <laughs> I don't know, whatever you said. Yeah, so congratulations everybody, well done. Oh, that's a great job as always. Can I go? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wasn't supposed to be sarcastic, Simon. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, they're saying thank you for a brilliant live in this heat, Rachel, Carol, and Simon. Thank yeah, you it for definitely that. has cooled down. It has cooled but down. But I think it's yes. because I'm doing less physical things yeah. now. Now, yeah. That, now that the rolling and, and the leaves. You've this fun around, by the way. Yeah, because I was thing. using the leaf. Ah, because I'm wondering why I'm cold. So I got Simon to move it off me because the leaf would have just gone I'm everywhere. Thinking, why have I got a cold arm? <laughs> Thank God you said arm. My arm's freezing cold and I'm thinking, crack it, that's cooled down in here, isn't it? <laughs> if I touch my other arm, my other arm's hot. My knee, knees are boiling, it's hot under <laughs> So you can see this is this is definitely holding its shape and it's not flopping Look back anywhere. And it's been what half an hour since yeah. I put that on. I would definitely leave it with a bit of support overnight yeah. because you just don't want to come down and it be like flopped everywhere um, and have to start again. But it's a really good one. This if you um, are not fully confident about your sugar paste skills. <laughs> So if you've done like a, a coat on your sugar paste and it's not perfect, then it's something you can quickly, you can wrap it. I love that idea. To be fair, you could do that on both cakes there, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, both cakes there. So if you haven't got the sharp edges, yeah, absolutely. cover them up nicely. We like that, don't we girls? So are you just using water to attach the glass? I am, just a little yes. bit of water. If these were fully set and rock hard, then I would use um, either a little bit of royal icing or edible glue. But because these are still sort of pliable, it's a perfect time to sort of, so when they're in that mid stage between, they're holding their shape, but so the shape that we form them in here, they're holding the shape, but they're not yet brittle, then you can just use water to pop them on. Yeah. Sylvia Anderson says, the cake looks fab. What a wonderful live. Oh. Yeah. So don't forget to like and share everybody. 
um, but don't share into classes and don't share with the people who don't want you to share them with so just like-minded cakey people that would be great do you want me to just quickly talk about these I do yeah so on the overhead Simon I'll just show these so this is a new product that I was stuck in some of you might have seen it um, I did it in uh, did a what's new Wednesday in my group last week or last week or the week before um, on these oh my gosh um, uh, they're from Burnt Island and they're acrylic cake pins um, so let us know if you've come across them um, and basically I'm just going to grab one of these fresh flowers behind me and we're going to just pop this into the back of the cake I'm grab the scissors just gonna it's gonna good for them to see how to do it couple of these off Michelle Quinn said, hey, can we start a new group called the Nearly Winners? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that not just another name for losers? <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all going to hate me now for saying that. I'm only joking. <laughs> no, you're not. It's just like always reads out there, oh, you nearly won, but you didn't. <laughs> it's always so harsh. <laughs> They'd be better off just not knowing that I know, so I know, funny. I know. I do, I do it all the time, I forget myself. <laughs> so, these are for popping into the side of your cake. So if you're arranging flowers where you're wanting them up the side of the cake like this, these are just a couple of fresh ones from behind me, um, and you're wanting them to be sort of going up the cake rather than sort of sitting really neat into a join, then you can, it, sometimes people struggle to know how to then secure them. This is going to be tricky getting them into here because it's a dummy. It's a but, um, and it's just, it just doesn't want to give. But basically, oh, there, we go. there we go. Yeah. We stick that in there and obviously then you've got this and you, there's different size ones for the different thicknesses of stems. So for these you could fit several into this one or perhaps a thicker, a yeah. thicker stemmed flower. Let me just find one of the smaller ones. that in look at all this soft sugar paste that's just been covered and I'm making loads of dents in it so these you could obviously fit quite a few in there just let me grab a few more they said they could have a group called this is what you could have won yeah look at what you could have won do you remember that <laughs> what was that off was that off bullseye or something <laughs> Thought you could have won. It's cruel. It's so cruel. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pop this. So these uh, these come in. Should we should we put that up a bit higher? Oh no, it's fine oh, it's like fine. that. Isn't it? yeah, it's just finding the right yeah. size. Yeah. Like with the flower picks, it's yeah, just finding exactly, the right yeah. size pick for. I don't think we're that getting nice that. Put that one in there. There we go. Oh, that looks nice. Doesn't so they're it? quite nice for like you know two tier or single tier cakes even. And there's different ones. You've got single hole. You've got the multi hole. So there's three. There's one called um, cameo, and that's because they're green and they're like camouflage. So they ah. tell me. Did you? I got told that the other day. I didn't. I didn't. I haven't yeah. got this one. I've just yeah. got the other two set. And then there's one that's the single white hole, which is the everyday one, I think. And then that's there's these. the multi one. Yeah, so these are the singles. You've and got you to peel, peel off. off. Yeah, <laughs> did that together. So this is the green one, but you've just got to remember to peel off the, um, like with anything acrylic that comes, you've just got yeah. to peel off the sticky on both sides. But yeah, this green one would be perfect against that cake. Yeah, it would. So yeah. Yeah. And then obviously these are just clear acrylic, so they just become invisible. But yeah, obviously you could use these again if you're going to get the cake back. If you're doing it for friends and family, you can reuse these. Just give, pop, pop them in the wash. Just obviously in a bowl of hot soapy water in the sink. But look how discreet they are. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? They're great. They're all laughing here about uh, Michelle Quinn. She nearly won. <laughs> I feel bad now. <laughs> Yeah, we do stock these. They're on the website. They're in the What's New section. Um, they're cake pins by Burnt Island yeah. Occasions. I haven't put Burnt Island on because I didn't realise they were Burnt Island until tonight. I've just called them cake pin. No, well, uh, there's nothing <laughs> else called cake pin. If so. you go into search and put cake pin, you'll see there's three different lots. But yeah. A few people in my group had tried them out last week and um, they've used them on their cakes already. Some people had already ordered them, but yeah. some people had already used them and said they worked a treat and 
they you know they used a, they a really few good. a few different ones at different heights yeah. and they were just so easy to use so yeah. I've had some good feedback in my group so far for, from them so yeah let us know how you find them very good Right, so what a brilliant night. So they're all saying what a brilliant night. It's been lovely spending the night with you. a bit of a random cake yet. design, but it was yes. really to show you all the different uses yeah. that you can just use sugar paste for. So it's, you know, you don't need to just be stuck to... Do you want to show that? Yeah. No. Oh, you don't need to just be stuck to using it for covering. You can actually um, carry on and use it on things like your moulds. Yeah, it's just fell over? Yeah, they're just okay. a bit soft. Yeah. I, I thought my eyes were going funny there. I was thinking, what's happened to that flower there? Yeah, we're going to come back and show you the wedding cake because I know some of you wanted Simon to zoom in into a few bits. So let me just tell you what's going on this week as well while Rachel goes and gets the wedding cake. Tracy Mann is back doing her live tomorrow night at 6.30. She's now only going to do lives on Tuesdays because like Rachel, the wedding season's kicked off and there's, she, didn't do, she can't do nothing for the weekend. So if you're in my buttercream flowers class, we've got a two o'clock start tomorrow and we're doing gerberas, if I remember right. So we're doing gerberas and we're going to use whipping it up, but as flavored icing sugar. So we're gonna make it up, so it's gonna be 500 grams of whipping it up, 250 grams of butter, don't add any water, don't add the extra butter to make it more stable for this heat. Okay, and we'll be making gerberas in tomorrow's class. Half past six tomorrow, Tracy Mann, Wednesday, my cupcake bouquet class. We're doing two bouquets. We're doing a seven and a twelve. Let me tell you, what we're going to make on Wednesday is going to be stunning. But you're going to have to prepare yourself for it. But you are going to love it, okay? And then on Thursday night, I am back in the kitchen. Um, and I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I know. I'm going to make <laughs> some rounds. That's it. We're whipping it up. And I think I'm making a pineapple and a strawberry and some other meringues, anyhow. And then um, there's no live on Friday because Karen and I are down the warehouse, okay? And then we will see everybody who is coming to the demonstration day on Thursday, on, on Saturday. Don't know where I got Thursday from. On Saturday, I hope you all make it. I can't do any refunds, sorry about that, but hopefully you don't get pinged. But because we're a business, because we're opening up, we've got overheads, I just can't do any refunds. I've, done, I've changed everything when it was closed down. It was a complete nightmare, but I've got through all that, done all that, refunding and moving everybody. But on the day, if you don't turn up, I just have to say I'm really sorry. All right then. I'm not mean. I just It's just I've got staff to pay and um, some of that goes towards um, staff wages. All right then. Right then, so let's talk through this cake because it's a stunner, isn't it? So this well, is... I've just been showing it all. He's oh, been, he's been, been it all. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have. Look at that. Should we start at the bottom again while Rachel talks about it then? <laughs> oh, should... oh, no, come <laughs> on, start at the top. Fine. Let's start at the top because you're at the top now. <laughs> I'm just right. going at the bottom. And yes, I know. Well, let's do the top. She didn't talk about it. So go on, oh, okay. let, let Rachel talk about it. Go on. So... In the class in November, we're doing a wedding cake masterclass, so it will, we'll be working on a pre-covered sugar paste cake, and we'll literally be just focusing on the decorative technique. So we've already done the, the we can do. We've already done the sugar paste um, techniques in the sugar paste masterclass, including covering square tiers. So we're going to use that skill by we've got a square base tier here, and we're going to finish that off with some beautiful mouldings. And gilding um, so we're using some really simple molds to just add a bit of detailing also this technique is brilliant if you haven't got perfect corners so if you're still perfecting your corners oh, just like we did idea. here this is how I started doing square tears when I was still a little bit unsure about how to get my top edge and they weren't always perfect and I just always designed them with some kind of molding and um, texture or design element on those corners to kind of cover it up. I love um, that idea. Always. Covering just, the corners. Yeah. Clever girl. Um, and just always like encouraging your clients to go, what would be really nice on your square tier is this? Um, because it, it, you know it then gives you a little bit of leeway. Um, moving on to the next tier, we're going to do these beautiful, delicate, like colour wash. The colour isn't picking up on this. We might do it a bit more, um, something a bit more, uh, a bit less subtle on the actual day so you can see a bit more. Um, but these are like nude sort of colour washed, what's supposed to be like silk ribbons or like they're a bit ballet slippery I always think but and then we're, we're gilding those a little bit. 
Um, moving on to this big tall tier, obviously we're continuing this texture up as well because we don't just need to keep stick to one tier, we're going to continue it up. Um, we're colour washing this tier so it's got a really subtle pink colour wash on um, and then we're going to hand paint calligraphy which I know for some of you is a bit like a oh my god I'll never be able to do that but I've taught this before and you will absolutely it is a bit of a practice makes perfect but I'm going to teach the technique and teach you some kind of again step change ways that you can try it out without doing it full on to the cake straight away so I'll show you how you can practice and perfect in like a, a middle of the ground way that isn't painting directly onto your cake if you're scared of doing that until you've got the confidence to do it this way as well or you can just go straight in and do it straight onto your cake if that's what you want. Can you just turn that cake round so they can see that ruffle? Yeah. Yeah, so it goes all, it goes all the way around doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it goes up and then comes down at the back and on the other side it kind of just yeah. wraps around the back. Yeah. Beautiful. So it's got some detailing from, you know, cakes are often at weddings seen from multiple angles as well. So it's just to give it some interest so it's not all just on the front. Then moving on to the next tier, we're going to do these gilded edible sequins, which are super quick and easy to do. Really cheap effect for you to incorporate into a design. Um, and do you buy gold ones or do you colour? I colour them. Yeah. So that... Um, as we do loads of sequins and they, they could colour them. Yeah. So these are the confetti, yeah. the multicoloured ones, yeah. and it's really so that you can use the Wonder Dust in whatever tones you want because there's such a wide range of them and quite often I'll mix them to get a specific, because clients sometimes they're like, oh we're having gold and they'll send me their stationery, so we try and, like oh, there's so many different golds yeah. isn't there, we try and tonal match things so that everything sort of you know if you get if you get gold really different they really do look quite mismatched i'm quite glad rachel's showing you that because we do the rainbow confetti in pastel and in the darker 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 multicolors. but it's great that rachel's going to show you how to change them to gold because that's what you're going to want to do so yeah. we sell those in 100 gram bags 250 gram bags and 500 gram bags and they're really cheap i think they're three pound 49 yeah. for and a you, 500 gram bag and you won't need all of that for this no. um and it's such a quick easy um technique and i've used these what i call a separator tiers where they're two two or three inch i think this is two inches deep and i've used these between tiers um, so say for example I've had a three tier cake, I've then used one of these in between every single tier to get that extra height without, you know, so it looks like a really big impressive cake because you've added an extra two tiers, two inches in between every tier, um, but it's polystyrene and it's a really quick effect. So not only have you added that extra height so it's a much more impressive cake, it's a really quick thing to do so you're adding that. It's actually very clever at, that, isn't it? Like so they're not really baking cost that tall way. cake yeah. out. So people, what a clever girl you are. I try. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. So a lot of times people go, oh we want, we, they, they, they look at it and they think it's like a six tier cake. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, it's only four tiers and that's, yeah. there's actually separators or something. Yeah. Um, and then this top tier we've left quite plain but we're gonna focus on the sugar flowers on this and the leaves. So you're gonna learn some of the signature techniques that you can apply to all kinds of sugar flowers and leaves, but obviously we'll come onto that in a different class altogether, but this is just a bit of a taster session mm -hmm. so that you can start to learn how to put. So you can see here, it's just one flower and one leaf, but because we've done multiple of them, so you learn, if you're new to sugar flowers, you can still create something high impact even though you only know how to make one flower. And that's by creating a big um, statement arrangement of it using the same flower. And actually a lot of florists are doing that at the moment where they're creating big arrangements but using one single flower variety. And it looks so simple and modern, but it has, because they're, because it's, a, a big arrangement they're making they're using one flower to make a big arrangement it has the impact you don't need to know how to make 10 20 different flowers to be able to put florals on wedding cakes you can build up your your um like repertoire of sugar flowers as you go so each time you then do an order for somebody if they say we're having peonies you can learn how to make a peony and just do a massive big cluster of peonies all the same flower but because you're making a statement with that 
one flower by making multiple of them, it still looks amazing and, and really impressive. So don't feel like you can't be doing sugar flowers because you don't know how to make all the flowers. You can start off simple with one flower and still make something that looks really impressive and that packs a punch in a statement and just wows your customers. So that's what we're going to do. And obviously, if there is any time left in the class, we will be adding more onto this. We will show you variations of things. Um, and obviously, if questions come up on the day, which I'm sure they will, I'll take the opportunity if there's any time to kind of demonstrate um, rather than just answer. I'll demonstrate some of that as, as well if we've got time. That's amazing. As always. Amazing. Well done. Well, hasn't Rachel done well? So big rounds of applause, ladies. Let's show our appreciation. Big thank you for Simon. And thank you to you guys for joining. And thank you to all the winners. So if you get those love hearts going, which they're going now. Come on, we want thousands of them, not just the odd dodgy ones. Show us the love. Oh, there's actually quite a lot. Actually, <laughs> well, get the fingers on there. Ding, 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 ding. She's right. actually sat there, like, yeah. doing this yeah. into thin air. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> get those fingers on there and um, big thank you to you all um, as I say I will see you in buttercream flowers tomorrow I'll see you in the cupcake bouquet class on Wednesday 10 a.m. start you are a witness that Simon is here in the building yeah. 10 a.m. and we're, we're gonna start early because of the heat so and believe me it's gonna be a fast class <laughs> don't ask any questions <laughs> Comments work, might class. not be working. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then Thursday, uh, no Tracy Mann on Thursday night. Uh, Thursday morning, sorry. Um, but you have got me in the kitchen making meringues with whipping it up. You've all bought it in the sale, so we'll be making those on Thursday. And then Friday, Karen will not be doing a live on Friday. She's got to work with me down in the warehouse on Friday. All right then, ladies. So have a super night. And we'll see you whenever we see you next. Thanks All right. for having me. Love you lots. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.